Hey, everybody. Uh, let me just, um, two things today. Um, I couldn't see, I mean, I can't see out of this eye. And it, I mean, it's all, you know, it's a big haze, but I couldn't see out of this eye either. But it's better now. It's better. I don't know what was going on, but it was a little scary. I thought, uh-oh, I've got to <laughs> go to the emergency room or something. But it's all right. The second thing is my computer took forever to warm up, and I had to reestablish everything. So let me just check my, my settings for uh, – oh, it's okay. It's okay. All right, so you should be able to hear me. Uh, you should be able to hear me. I <clears throat> traded phone calls with him. I have no idea if he went live with somebody else without me or if he's busy somewhere else. So if he calls in, we'll have him. And if not, you've got me. Um, so let's just go down. Uh Hey, Benjamin. Hey, Mark. Uh, Akira Nova. Ronnie Atkins. I don't know if you were second by the comments, but maybe you were second by signing in. Um, hmm. So slow. All right. Um, Hey, Timinator, the Dorminator, Jason, Sway. Hey, Robert, how are you? Um, I can't, I can't read. Somebody just texted me. I just can't read. I got to get to a... Uh, um, eye surgeon. I had an appointment. I think it might have been the week that finger, you know, what was looking like it was going to go. And normally, you know how doctors, they have their staff send you and call you. Nothing happened because I was a new patient. So I missed that appointment, but I'm going to have to go in. I couldn't read that. Anyway, it's all right. Um, this guy, I'm going to give you a pass on that one, Jonathan. I One, I don't, if you've sold your stock, maybe it is gone. I, I have no idea. You make no reference to which positions you're in. But I'll just quickly go down the list. If it's MMTLP, your money's not gone. If it's uh, uh, Lodger LGIQ, uh, let me see where that's trading. Uh, looks like uh, the bid is four cents. The ask is four and a half cents, if, I, if I'm reading that right. So that's way down, of course. But remember, they distributed CAUD, which is being destroyed by complete theft and fraud in the U.S. markets. But I think the um, the reverse merger candidate could be announced as soon as next week. You know, with the way it's gone, I would plan on delays. But that should be a value to each shareholder somewhere between 40 and 60 cents. I would lean on the conservative side, call it 40 cents. And that means the stock could trade up to 15, 20, 25 cents if you want to be cautious about it. It also means that the shorts in the shell may have to cover. So it could go higher than the 40, 50, 60 cents. That's on the logic shell. On CAUD, um, I think that's going to take a little more time. But I think the team 
led by Brent's son for now, uh, will come out swinging uh, uh, Monday, and we'll see what happens. What other stock could you be talking about? If you're talking about AMC, GME, you had a chance to get out of those. Um, and I don't, and I, I, you know, I take, I say that cause I just have to take a pass cause I don't know much about those situations, you know, in terms of details, if you're talking about GTII, I think GTII, uh, it would have been hard for you to have your money all gone. I don't know what you paid for it. If you, if you panicked into it as it was rallying a year ago, you could be down a lot, but otherwise you're down from maybe one or $2 and it's discouraging, but GTII still has the management team on your side and it still has a large, um, uh, short problem for the shorts. And uh, it's got all the other uh, uh, sundry items that we've discussed before. And it probably has the support of whales. I mean, it, rem it has support of whales, but it probably has the added impetus of whales if and when finger motion goes up. If you're in finger, finger is down. But Finger is the stock to be in. I think there's going to be a trade uh, potentially from these levels in LGIQ. But remember, we're de dealing with fraud across the board. But Finger is the trade to be in. And so if you're down in Finger, and this is your comment, um, I think you probably should just get out of the market. But Finger is a stock that could you could wake up one day and it's nine and then it's 15 and then it's 20 or 25. Oh, Mike Lucci. If you, if you. Call for him. If you, if you want to, um, if you want to, uh, <clears throat> if you want to piss and moan about Finger, it's up from a buck. I don't know, a buck range uh, six, seven months ago. So I, I'm not sure you're losing money there. But um, if you want to get out, get out. But I, I I think Finger is the one that can move tomorrow morning, uh, Monday morning, or it could take two months. But it could be explosive when it moves. Uh, I'm not going to go through the points with you. But and then logic, uh, you could get news tomorrow. Um, sorry, Monday or Tuesday that starts to make that one move for a trade, for a trade, you know, for a trade. But thank you, Jonathan Picasso, for for your very thoughtful comment. That's a mulligan for you. Hey, Eddie Eagle. Hey, Richie Rich. <laughs> Great picture. Happy picture. Um, hey, David, happy Friday. What is today? It's the, I think Sunday, the tennis starts. I can't wait for that. Friday the 10th. I wonder what that is. Friday the 10th. Um, can't think of what Friday the 10th could be. Um, hey, Jorge, hey, Garcia. Lovely picture. I had a I had a girlfriend who probably would understand. And I, and I mean that in a polite way. I'm not trying to be <laughs> she always, in pictures or whatever. She always stuck her tongue out. I don't know why. Hey, everyone. Uh, hey, Pat. I am. Thank you. I am feeling much better. Started yesterday. Today, I feel I feel. I feel renewed, stripped down, stripped down, and uh, but much, much better feeling. My, it's all that congestion and all that. I don't know. It's all gone. That's great. It's great. Thank you for asking. I hope you're well, Pat. Uh, Mr. BN Pro, afternoon. Hey, Mark. You got first. 
<laughs> oh, you're the first one in. That's a great. Hey, Laura Newton. Hey, the one. Hey, US One Tahoe. Um, this guy is good at charts, and he's good at uh, he's good at reading uh, entry points. And, and you know, when when you're looking at charts and all that, you don't have to make your full commitment at any one point. But anyway, I don't know how you contact him, but um, it maybe you can just ask a question while we're live. Um, Yellow to you too, Donna. I know you probably meant hello. Hey, Jason, thanks. Looks like you're you're in the fighting. Uh, something beeped. Um, looks like you're in the um, nation's forces. And, um, you know... I, I hate the triteness of how everyone says, thank you for your service. Of course they mean it and I mean it, but you know, thank you for doing what you do. I can't do that anymore. And um, I, I do hope that you're safe and that the, I, I believe the United States has essentially declared war on uh, Iran uh, by, by this, they, they put out a, an announcement that some, said something to the effect that that we reserve any and all means to prevent Iran from having nuclear uh, nuclear weapons um, or or something like that, and that's a scary step. And I I hope I really hope this saner heads prevail. I don't, as Winston Churchill said, it's better to jaw jaw than to war, war. And, uh, I, you know, there's nothing that a six-month or six-year war all out, there's nothing after that that'll be any different than now in terms of jaw, jaw. It'll just be a lot of people hurt and killed. And I, anyway, I give you my, I, 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 sincere blessings and hope that you're safe. And I thank you for what you do. Uh, hey, Steve, thank you. I hope you're well. Uh, someone says you're welcome. I think it's Siri over in the other room said I'm welcome. No, I didn't find that email. Let me get my notebook and write it down. There's two or three things on my list to do. And I've got to do them. I, I, um, when I couldn't see, I took a break. I just, I, I was, I was a little worried. So I have to admit, I took, I just, I took a break, lay down, fell asleep, and woke back up. So I didn't get on my list today. But I promised to you that I would check my emails. I know I have. So I'm writing it down. And I know I've promised before, but I'm writing it down today because I feel better after I get off, off this call. I will, I will check it. Um, I'm not exactly, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how to open up my new email, but I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Hey, Pecos Bill. Uh, what's happening with um, CAUD? I mean, it's in its simplest form, it's trading. There's buyers and sellers, but um, I think the company is going to look, there's a lot of ways to look at the situation. I've, I've sp spilled my spleen over the situation, as you know, probably part of it just cause I, I was, um, 
a bit cloudy in my head. But I I think with CAUD that they got this was a smash and grab by Wall Street, by hedge funds, by the shorts behind them, by the criminals behind them. And I think they sold stock that does not exist. And uh, I think they used the cover of the toxic convertible notes or whatever you want to call that, that crappy financing. And I think, in my opinion, they do everything in the shadows. But if, if you give them a promissory note, they give a copy of it with their shady attorneys to Jeffries. Give another copy of it to Goldman Sachs. Give another copy of it to uh, uh, Shearson Lehman. Give another copy to Wells Fargo. And then, and then those prime brokers start accepting orders like like the Nile River just had a, a flood in Ethiopia and it's coming downstream. They just, or upstream, depending on how you frame the Nile. But um, uh, that's what happened here. The, this, this crappy illegality uh which a cer certain subset of wall street does with a certain subset of attorneys all who can trust each other for reasons that go beyond the law and beyond wall street in my judgment um it's it's essentially a mafia and um Anyway, so with what what they did is sell. They took the stock from from twenty seven dollars. It went to thirty eight. I believe the criminals called into uh, um, Nasdaq and said, "Hey, the stock what, blah, 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 and click." Uh, the Nasdaq halted. They'll do anything to win. These are not friends. You know they they can capture CEOs. They can capture shills, friends, or foes, and they'll do anything. I really mean it. Unless you're part of their mafia, their tribe, you better you better watch your kidneys, you better watch your head, better watch your pocketbook. And their greed knows no bounds. So anyway. I think they've been selling it right now. It's 2.6 million shares. So I think the volume to my, I'm not as good at this as ham, but I think there's 8 million shares in volume uh, in this situation while you haven't been able to trade, or maybe you have. My understanding is there's five brokerage firms that have been crediting for uh, accounts with stock, which I don't think exists. But I, my understanding is that number is somewhere 800, 900,000, a million shares. It's not even that amount of improper, improper, not proper allocation of shares doesn't add up to this kind of volume. And uh, this is all fraud. They at three bucks, if you assume they did a, I don't know, pick an, a low number. I think it's a low number. Pick a VWAP of 18. Uh, they've made $15 on, on 8 million shares out of thin air, out of thin air. And that's why, that's why, I, that's, a, oh, that's $120 million. That money belongs to you, David. And to everybody else in the stock, the shareholders, this this is kind of like the Big Bang, even though the Big Bang looks like it, whether it happened or not, isn't the issue. 
it looks like the Big Bang wasn't the first thing that happened in the universe. But in the sense of, in this case of C-A-U-A-S-P-A-C-A-U-D, you're seeing it while it's happening. And it shouldn't be hard to track. But at a, on a low case, they stripped out $120 million. Now, some of those criminals might be covering. And maybe that's why the stock is up. I would, David, if you have, I, I you know, I hesitate to give uh, uh, advice because I don't know anybody's situation. I also hesitate because once fraud's involved, it's hard to call it correctly. But I think I can't trade in my account. I can't get out of CAUD. Why? I can't trade it. I think CAUD is going to have a counterattack next week. I mean, starting next week. It'll be simple at first, but then I think um, the narrative will be told and they've got a lot, lot, a long slog, a lot of work to do. But I think in the proper time frame, mine would be six to nine months. You might have a 10 or $15 stock again, but the risk, I would put it at high risk because the criminals are in charge. So, um, David, one thing I would suggest as a possibility, and I think I would do if if I could do, is at three dollars, uh, CAUD is twenty five cents. Um, you know, it's as if for logic you paid twenty five cents. That would be break even. So if you paid less for logic. You're ahead still. Um, I think I would sell CAUD and buy LGIQ. Logic, and it's not the only, these aren't the only two stocks to buy. I think Finger is number one, and I'm intrigued by a couple of others. But Logic, Logic for a trade, it's four and a, It's it's four six on the ask. If you bought logic under five cents and let see, this is what I don't know. I've gone through it before, David, but and I, I had the press I had the story. Of course, I won't be able to read it. I have it here, I think. Yeah, here's the pr Privco. Privco. This was a year ago. They they let this deal go because they were seeing much better deals. This the the value just to pick one number and to keep it simplistic, the value here is 250 million it says for the entities the the entity that would reverse merger into the shell. I don't know if it says, I don't know if it gives the percentage that logic that we would get as shareholders, but we will get something like 10 or 15 percent, 12 and a half percent, an eighth maybe. But anyway, in order for this to be better than that, it would have to be double, I think, $500 million. So if you, why do I say that? Because at the time this uh, was contemplated, there were far fewer shares of logic outstanding. So in order to be better on a per share basis, it it's going to have to be a bigger a bigger pie because there's more spoons ready ready to dip in. So, if we use 500 million and we use an eighth, not 10%, not 15%, but, but we multiply it by an eighth, that, six, that value to us will be 62,500,000. Now, 
Now, this value that we have, oh, girl, I found that things I thought had so much value didn't have any value at all without someone to love me for me. And then, girl, you came into my life and just to be close to you, girl. So anyway, that's 62 million, 62 and a half million in my little example. It could be worth more. I don't think it's going to be worth less than that. Um, otherwise, they would have done this, to just gone ahead and kept this deal on the hook. Um, and they had their choice, cream of the crop, David. So 62.5, if you divide that by 147 million shares outstanding, which is very disappointing, as I've expressed, that comes up to 42 cents a share, 42 cents a share. Now, I heard rumors that this deal was going to be worth 60, 70, 80 cents a share in a range. I would go with 40 cents now. That would be my target. The, the reverse merger into the logic shell will be worth value, value, of 40 cents. So then, David, so then, David, uh, the question comes, what happens to the price of logic? Well, if you believe that the system has, the, the Wall Street system has compliance systems in place and you believe that the self-regulatory nature of Wall Street is keeping control of the shorting going on in CAUD, and if you believe there's no criminality, it's not CAUD, I'm sorry, I'm talking about logic right now, um, in logic, and they're, they're keeping control of the criminality. I think in that case, if you're an apologist for the system, if you're still a believer in the system, I think logic would go from four and a half, five cents. Once the announcement is made of the new reverse merger candidate, if it's made as a definitive announcement, and remember, there'll, there'll be time in there, I'm sure, there always is, uh, for a third-party audit of the books. I wouldn't think that'd take very long, uh, maybe maybe uh, 60 days, maybe 45 days. Um, once this is announced as a definitive agreement, I think the stock will start upward. It may not hit its, is it, what's the word, apogee uh, in te, uh, until the deal is completely uh, signed, uh, until the deal is finalized. That could take six weeks. All right, so if you have faith in the system, if you're one of the people that believes um, uh, the SEC does its job, and FINRA does its job, and NASDAQ does its job, your broker-dealer does its job, then I would assume from five cents, you would want to trade out of logic at 15, 20 cents. I wouldn't wait longer than 20 cents, if that's your view. Remember, I think it might be worth uh, 42 cents to when they announce it. If, on the other hand, you're more of my view on what's going on the war, uh, on Wall Street, which is the uh, Gary Gensler, Goldman Sachs, SEC sanctioned theft of hundreds of trillions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars, if not trillions of dollars, out of the U.S. economy by the big banks and the big funds and offshore financial terrorists without paying taxes, um, I think there could be a little bit of a short squeeze, David. 
if they announce, I, I think in logic, there's been criminal selling of counterfeit shares. If they announce in this shell that there's going to be a half a billion dollar or better company merging in, and I just, I just did reverse arithmetic, and it's going to be, say, a NASDAQ or an NYSE company. And remember, they'll do a reverse split at the time the deal is completed. So you'll, maybe you have a $25 stock with revenue and income and growth. And it's, it's far away from the killing fields, the financial killing fields, of the over-the-counter markets. I think the shorts, the criminal shorts are going to scramble to cover. That's my opinion. But you have to believe my premise to trade that way. So if you buy logic now at five cents, if as it goes through, a, a, once this, whatever the name, whatever it is, is announced, as it starts to rally up, if you're in the camp that wall, everything's hunky-dory on Wall Street, you, I would suggest start getting out at 10, 15, 20 cents and take the trade. It might be a one-week trade. It might be a six-week trade, eight-week eight trade. But if you're more like me, maybe you only trade part of it and you keep your eye out to see if there's a forced buy-in, panic buy-in, and there's a short squeeze. Now, I'm not, I personally wouldn't expect it to go more than 42 cents or maybe 50 cents, 75 cents, a dollar, dollar 25. That's where I would be getting out all day long. Maybe it'll go higher. I don't know. But if I had a chance in a buy in of logic, to, which will now be called something else. I don't know. We should pick a name. Maybe it'll be called. Uh, maybe it'll. Be, I, I can't think of a name. Um, I would get out all day long at 40, 50, 60, 75 cents. And if it went to two, I'd say, well, good for the person who waited. But I'm happy to turn my LGIQ shell into 40, 50, 60, 70 cents or, or more. But that would mean that I David that I'm right that there's a large counterfeit position of phony shares if you're more on the side that hey Wall Street never does anything wrong they're they're on the retail side so the position is legitimate shorts maybe it only gets up to like I just said you know 20 cents so start selling at 10 15 and 20. Anyway, that's all that's all I can think of David on CAUD. In terms of what's happening with CAUD, ASPA through their investment advisors or maybe they work with their investment advisors introduced uh the company. Number 1 ASPA always slow walked the work for the SEC. So you can wonder, were they part of it? I don't know. But at this point, I don't know who to trust. Other than Brent's son, I don't know who to trust. But um, ASPA introduced these two hedge funds that are friends. Well, the hedge funds are probably fronts, just like Jeff, Jeff Easton. And they lie probably just like Jeff Easton. Oh, hey, we're not doing it. But it's the their fronts for the criminals. Once they get this, this document, this document that says um, we're going to issue X amount of shares and we've put them in escrow at the transfer agent free to trade. Like I say, they duplicate that out to all the prime brokers. It checks the box. And it doesn't seem like Wall Street's ever interested in going back. It's like a set it and forget it. They never go back and look again. 
It's like a, a teenage daughter driving a car. She never checks the oil. Although my college roommate, uh, who was somewhat of a mechanic and his father, a judge, was loved to work on cars. He, he my, my friend went on a trip to North Carolina, I think, in his MG. And he never checked the oil. And on the way back home, the car, the engine blew out and, and uh, the car was like, uh, I just sat by side the road. So anyway, so that's all I know, David, on CAUD. Bonus tardes, my little darling. T. Alex. I think, I think it's uh, a great time to buy finger stock. I'd stay away from the options for November and December, unless you know what you're, unless you know that if I buy, like if you buy it for five cents and it, and it goes to the moon, but, um, um, one eyed Willie, well, you know what, by doing that, my eyesight is cleaned up a little bit. It's, it's almost like the brain. I, I'm, I can't tell which eyes. I guess this is my bad eye. It's all. It's almost like my brain was adjusting to this eye, and that. But by doing that, by doing that, now my brain is focusing on this eye. I, I don't know how to explain it, but I can see a little bit better now. In fact, I can see pretty damn clearly. Am I diabetic? Um, that's your mulligan. Uh, we can hear you. We can hear you, unfortunately. I don't think it's the computer that is, is hurting my eyes. I think it's Dr. My Eyes. Well, I was driving outside of Early one Sunday morning outside of Bakersfield, listening to the preacher on the colored radio station. And he said, all you have to do is say a prayer. No, all you have to do is donate to the church of the say of the bleeding heart of Jesus Christ. So I did. And all and all my dreams came true. So if you're down on your luck and you can't harmonize, find a girl with far away eyes. Well. I was feeling bleary, a little worse for wear and tear, but there sitting in the corner was the girl with far away eyes. Well, you know what kind of eyes she's got. If you're downright dejected, disgusted, and life won't harmonize. Get a girl with far away eyes. I think the best thing to do is just stay away from love. Once you fall in love with a girl, it's all over. Well, Mitchell Wong, um, I went to the best surgeon. Oh, it's this one. It's this one. And they did all sorts of tests and drops and everything. And he said it's not detached. It's not detached. But if 
but it's weak. And so if I, if, if one day, I don't know what a floater is, but I can imagine if it does detach, a lot of skin will float in my eye. He said, call us immediately. And because I have established a relationship with this top surgeon, they will accept me immediately um, to correct anything. And I have a follow-up appointment in one year at his request. I will never miss. I, ne I will never miss a follow-up with that guy. Hey, Jennifer. Big jump on CAU today. Do you think some shares are being bought back? Yes, it's possible. Because those shares were restricted. And in many cases didn't exist. But what I think... Uh, DB is much more likely is that the so-called real shorts, I, I wish we could come up with a better word for naked shorts, criminals, <laughs> counterfeiters. Um, there, there are some real shorts probably. And I bet the real shorts are traders. They're smart. It's down, they're covering, they're booking their profit. I don't think the criminals have. So the one thing I'd be really careful of is if you're able to trade CAUD, which I'm not, um, I'd be very careful that it goes back down. Why would that go on? Um, so I'd be nervous that it would go back down. Um, and the other thing might be going on right now is that I think the brain trust, you know, it was the management of the ASPA uh, uh, entity that screwed this up. Now, it might be as innocent that they didn't know what the heck they were doing and they trusted the hedge fund, but that's still pretty bad. I think the Congress should make it illegal for CEOs to sign these deals because the SEC is not going to go after the hedge funds that, and the criminals. The criminals are the biggest clients of Goldman Sachs prime brokerage. In fact, in my judgment, the criminals are the, cli the clients. And sorry, Goldman Sachs prime brokers, uh, 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 Stevie Cohen, Ken Griffin, and the rest, uh, Leon Cooperman, and the rest of them. But um, uh, uh, it could be buyback. It could be a buyback. It could be the real, the lead, you know, the people that do it properly. But I don't know where I don't know where there was a proper short in this. There weren't any shares to borrow. That's why I say it's like the big bang. One guy says, get the nobo list. All right, let's get the nobo list last week. There were there there were forty one thousand five hundred and fifty five shares in existence. <laughs> get the nobo list. I did talk a little bit of logic, illogically. Hey, Sada Aman, peace. Yeah, it's nice, Garbini. Don't, don't, um, don't get all confident that it's going to hold, but it might. But um, I expect that the ASCA, PAA, absolutely untalented, at least in the sense they couldn't. You, you know what the job of a leader is? Look over the hill and see the risk that's coming that no one else can see. They're a bunch of, they're, they, they're, they failed at that task. But I think now CAUD gets a whole new, uh, what do you call it, C-suite. And I don't know the composition. I don't know who, 
that's not truthful. I have an I have an inclination of who's going to be put in charge of it, but I'm not at liberty to say it. But um, uh, I think there'll be a new rollout, and that's less important than that once they take the wheel, they can start fighting back and they can start telling their narrative. They can start funding it. And uh, maybe we, and maybe I have an idea, which I'm not going to share out over the, this, uh, but I have shared with two people there. I have an idea that would absolutely obliterate the criminals and put you back in the driver's seat and get CAUD, uh, in my judgment, up to 50 bucks a share. It would, then, it, would, it would involve waiting a little bit, six to 18 months. But hey, I'd take it. Something going on, non, something is going on non-COD. Um, well, did you see, hi, Sideshow Bob, did you see that Elon Musk interview? Ah. Mm. Let me see if I have this on settings on my on my oh good all right all right you guys come on it's so slow is does everything have to be slow in my life i guess it does i just guess it does My aunt used to tell me that when you get stuck in a long line, that's when your God is testing your ego and you just have to deal with it. All right, it's taking forever. We'll see if it comes on. Um, That's simply not correct, and it depends on where you. It, it depends on where you bought AMC. I wasn't involved. I wasn't uh, anywhere associated with um, with uh, AMC. I saw it afterward. After it ran, to my memory, from four dollars to seventy six cents. Uh, seventy six dollars. If you didn't get out, it was easy to get out. By the way. You could have sold. If you didn't at least take your original money off the table. I mean, I've made those mistakes myself, so I can't judge you. But it absolutely had a run. And since then, many, many times, I've said they have this all in control. But I don't know if that's a real name. But but if you can't believe that, you saw in the news that SAC, Cohen, uh, uh, Shitadel, Griffin rescued Melvin Capital, rescued Fairchild Capital in those two cases. And you can't put two and two together that the whole system, remember, Citadel is the Fed. You, you couldn't put two and two together that they're controlling it. And since then, you've had a chance to sell those uh, AMC, whatever the hell, one of those or both. They've run up. And you've been able to get out and trade, get out, get back in. But you stand like a statue. Anyway, I can't, I can't rightly recall a more stubborn point of view. You got to, you got to realize that you made a mistake. You know what comes when you accept that? Power. Power. Dun, 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 power. Looking good. Feeling good, Leroy.
All right. I'm not commenting on any more of your points. I don't know who Jonathan is. Uh, Andy Brewer. It's good not to be angry. I got, I, you've seen me get angry. And uh, that's just where they want you. Angry. What's this? That was trash and my dog was licking at it. So I took it and put it up there. Just bought a bunch more GTI after a whale. Ah, uh, here, Steve. I don't have mine. And remember, you're only going to get a third of it, 33%. It's not a third. It's 33%. It's not 0.333. So, but um, it's almost a third. But I haven't gotten mine. I haven't got mine. Uh, it does. It does piss me off. And it's a lot like COSM. The only difference is um, with COSM, they were promising a squeeze. I never, I personally never promised a squeeze in CAUD. I did think it would run up and it went to 38. But, and the deal was like, but what's similar, dissimilar and similar, they took a, a crappy, a, a toxic, criminal, destructive, time bomb, uh, 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 shot of heroin, uh, speedball, whatever you want to call it, financing. COSM did it quickly and without telling you. At least these guys told you because you voted on it. <laughs> I mean, but I, as you know, um, I don't know, three, two and a half months ago when it was announced, I lost my shit. But then I got I got assurances that, oh, no, 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 it's going to be all right. You're wrong. You, you'll see friends of the company, friends of, oh, bullshit. But um, uh, where I think there is both risks, Steve, and I don't want to hide the risk in, C, in CAUD, I personally think the criminals are in control and they're not done yet. But, but management isn't management at logic and management, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, uh, it, well, the management that, that's going to be in at CAUD, definitely not. But to the extent, I, I have an open question in my mind, and I'm it's it's open. But I wonder if ASPAA worked in cahoots with um, with um, uh, the two hedge funds. You know, the I I just showed you, but the amount of money that they stripped out of the market cap in a week illegally, and they had advanced opportunity. Well over a hundred million in my arithmetic. A hundred million dollars. That pays off a lot of people. That's similar to COSM. Um, I think I think there was a lot. I think the Kramers were in trouble to a tune of a billion dollars, and to the extent that that squeeze got stopped by COSM, I wouldn't be surprised. It's just an opinion and a speculation that even the CEO of COSM might have been paid off. But it, you wouldn't have to have paid him off. You just induce him. You introduce him to this, this smiling face firm on, on Madison Avenue and thereby to the short sellers. And you give him the sugar plum he's looking for, the opportunity to strip $35 million out of the market. And he thinks he's in hog heaven. 
So I can see why you why it reminds you of it. I I do think there's two glimmers of hope. I know that Brent son is is not only not remember this deal was an ASPA deal. They did the deal, not Brent. Brent didn't have any control of them over it. It was the ASPA's friends that were the two hedge funds. So anyway, I think there's going to be fighting here on your behalf, on my behalf. Doesn't mean it's going to work. I'm telling you, this destruction, which is criminal in my judgment, they're in charge right now. But I have, and I've shared it, a way just to neutron bomb it all. And the shorts would be so F-U-C-K that... um, Anyway, so there are some differences, but it does, there's no question. There's no question um, that... Actually, I would even go further, Steve. The damage done is even worse than COSM in terms of opportunity cost lost. But right now, Steve, at $3 with CAUD... And I'm like you, I can't get out. But at $3, that's equivalent to 25 cents buy-in. And I I think that's somewhere around my my acquisition cost. I know others have much higher acquisition costs of logic. What pisses me off is if I could have... And this is where Wall Street is not a level playing field as much as uh, Goober Gary Gensler lies about that. They let the criminals sell first. They didn't let us sell. It wouldn't have been hard. Restricted shares, memo to Wall Street. There's only 40,000 shares in in existence, except no sell orders until your retail clients are able to sell as well. So anyway, my my point is, Steve, even if we had gotten out at $10, we would have tripled our money and we would have taken all of our original funds off the table and then everything else is for free. And that's the best way to trade. But they took that away from us. So I I think I've expressed my anger I think you've seen it. And uh, I I think it's a, hey, won't you play another somebody done somebody wrong song. I love this. I love this. 250 calls at, at five cents. So in exchange for a a knockoff color screen, uh, flat screen TV or whatever they're called now, instead of getting one of those, you put yourself in the position that if there were some news and it it went up $10, it, it went to... It went to seventeen fifty. You could make a quarter of a million dollars. I think that's a pretty. I think that's a pretty savvy move. So hey, won't you play another? It is the two hundred and forty eighth birthday of the U.S. Marine Corps. Do I have to answer that? I'll take a deep breath and I'll answer this without questioning 
how smart my audience is. Sweet and sour in the middle of April, I think, uh, GTII it issued as a special dividend as one of, I'd say it was the 10th or 15th time they tried to do something to reconcile, uh, to, to cause settlement, to cause locate, to cause buy-ins on Wall Street, to do the job of Gary Gensler, the cop, asleep. So they issued restricted shares in GTII to you, if you're a real person. Uh, one restricted share, common share for every 10 you own. What does restricted mean? Sweet and sour. Restricted means you can't trade it. That's what restricted means. What does that mean on the other side to the broker dealers? It means they can't just stuff your account with an IOU. It's a corporate action. It comes before their computer screens and maybe eyes. And it's put in your account as a holding place, but it's not an IOU. It's not electronic toil toilet paper. Okay, what else does restriction, restricted shares mean in the United States? Six months. The legend stays on for six months. And if you're Elvis Presley, the legend lives on. So, sweet and sour, what is happening? You received your dividend over six months ago, and it's in your account. Restricted. No value, no trading. The system right now is facing a choice. Last year, Fidelity was paying a thousand percent to borrow shares because they had a problem with the warrant as a special dividend distribution at that time. And the stock was in the middle of a squeeze or the, the beginning stages of a squeeze. Thousand percent of Fidelity. So now Fidelity is facing the situation. Last time they could say, oh, wait, we didn't know. Sorry, officer. I don't know how that beer got in, that open container beer and vodka and, and the marijuana and the naked girl in the back seat. I don't know how they got in the car. I've just borrowed the car from my son. But this is now the second time. Officer, I don't know. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't I pull you over six months ago? And now you're in the same situation? Get out of the car, please. Turn around. Put your hands behind your back. That's what Wall Street's facing now. So let's use Fidelity. Fidelity has restricted a corporate action for a distribution of one restricted share for every 10. If we suspend belief for those who disbelieve and assume there's 400 million shares sold that don't exist, you can pick whatever. You can cut that in half. You can cut it in by three quarters. You can cut it. You can divide it out by tenths or twentieths. Whatever you want to do. But just for example, 400 million shares sh that sold that don't exist. The system is full of 400 million shares that are just electronic toilet paper. That means there's 40 million dividends that there's a corporate action in your account, 40 million, but Fidelity 
if they're of a large percentage of that, they can't find, there are no real shares for that. There's nothing they can send to the transfer agent. There's there's nothing real they can put in your account. What? So they have a choice, sweet and sour. And it's not that hard to understand. I don't know why. Uh, anyway. Uh, I suppose you only got through the third grade and you had to move on to to uh, becoming a, a investor. Um, so Fidelity faces a choice. All right, the legend's coming off. We can go out and buy real shares or at least go out and buy in the failed to locates. And then we can give sweet and sour the, the dunce uh, one share for every 10 shares he has that's free to trade. And thereby we're following proper uh, uh, federal securities laws And we're doing the right thing, as the apologists say. Or we have a choice. We'll just stuff Sweet and Sour's account with counterfeit shares. Then we're breaking the law. We're taking an act to break the law. And guess who's watching? West Christian. West Christian. But anyway... I'll look forward to your question. What's happening with the GTII dividend? Are people able to get them? You already got it. The question is, and you're going to say, well, how do I know if I have real shares in my account or I have counterfeit shares? You don't. The way Wall Street, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, uh, Ken Griffin, uh, Leon Cooperman, all of the big boys, the way they hide it for you, they put in a rule about 13, 15 years ago, they no longer hold phys physical securities. Everything's electronic. It's as if they make a stew with real meat and not real meat, the fake meat. And how do you tell what you're eating? All tastes the same. But anyway, sweet and sour, I hope that helps you. I find that question and your, your lack of understanding so painful to respond to. I have to move on because I can feel I can feel the pressure building. Hey, Giannis. Hey, uh, Barbara from David, Daryl, hello. All right, I'm just going to put that up. I'm not going to comment. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure what that says. Hey, Boat Bum. Um, bum. I thought it said Baum. Um, Blue Five. Uh, Lowell. Kitties. Sorry, Lowell. I didn't give you much time. Your your time in the limelight. <laughs> time in the lights. Hey, Gen Z. Um, sweet and sour. I'm going to ignore that. That's your that's your mulligan. That is your mulligan, sweet and sour. Uh, Sal, how are you? Thank you, Santo Castillo. Santo. Oh, no, 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 no. Da 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 da
да. Да, да. Да, да, да. I don't know why. I, nobody smokes in this house. <sighs> Serenity now. I love this. Ronald Abbott, I've sent over 500 emails to the DLJ. I love it. I love it, what you're doing. I love it. think with the finger price so low uh it's not that low let me look where it is it's 355 355 caud is 297 logic is four cents and that's on the ask the bid is three five. I wish I had some cash. Finger is um, four fifty four. Look, uh, AP. I'm not a chartist, but if I had a chart, I'm sure I would see a pattern where the stock has come from around a dollar, dollar something, all the way up. I think it went to seven or eight. And now it's pulled back. And I'm sure this is some sort of ratio. But this is a normal pullback in a market and in trading. So I don't find it <clears throat> so low, number one. Number two, um, if, if you need, and I'm not making fun of you. I'm talking about any, any random person. If one needs uh, constant, uh, success of the stock going up every day. That's just not realistic. But um, uh, it does not need to squeeze from $8 or $20. It can squeeze from $4.54. But I, AP, would not get in my mind that my first goal with Finger is to see a squeeze. My first goal would be able to see some event that took it to $10 or $15 or to $20 or to $25. And at that point, unlike sour, sour puss coriander, uh, if you don't take your original money off the table, God help you and the Englishman. Because you could have finger for very rational reasons, for example, go to $25 without any covering, without any squeeze. And then, a la AMC, GME, the powers that be put the weight back down and they drive it back down to 10. How? Fraud? Oh, yeah, fraud. It, fraud hasn't gone away just because the stock goes up. Their only discipline is to keep selling. Sell now. Sell tomorrow. Sell forever. Because the SEC does absolutely nothing. It, I tried to play it. And my stupid, my stupid, my every system I have. The SEC go after any of the hedge funds uh, who were nonstop shorting and distorting Tesla. Not once. They would lie flat, the hedge funds would lie flat out on TV for their own gain at the expense of retail investors. Not once, literally a thousand times. Not once did the SEC pursue them. How do you explain this failure? And the incentive SEC? structure is, is messed up because the, the, the lawyers at the SEC are not paid well. They, they, it's a fairly low paying job, but they're, what they're looking for is a trophy from, from the SEC 
that they're looking for something they put on basically their LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, from that, they can get a job at a high paying law firm. That's exactly what the uh, lawyer here did. Um, and, 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 and the reason they don't attack the, the hedge funds is because those hedge funds employ those law firms. And they know if they attack the hedge funds, they're affecting their, pure, their future career prospects. So they sell small investors down the river for their own career. That's what actually happens. Regulatory capture. Regulatory capture. Yeah. Not good. Of course, when you hear it from him, you don't listen. And then when things go wrong, you blame you blame the CEOs who don't know jack shit. But but not once did the SEC go after any of the hedge funds uh, who were nonstop shorting and distorting Tesla. Not once. They would lie flat. The hedge funds would lie flat out on TV for their own gain at the expense of retail investors. Not once, literally a thousand times. Not once did the SEC pursue them. How do you explain this? Failure the incentive SEC. structure is, is messed up because the, the, the lawyers at the SEC are not paid well. They, they, it's a fairly low paying job, but they're, what they're looking for is a trophy from, from the SEC that they, they're looking for something they put on basically their LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, from that, they can get a job at a high paying law firm. That's exactly what the, uh, lawyer here did. Um, and, 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 the, and the reason they don't attack the, the hedge funds is because those hedge funds employ those law firms. And they know if they attack the hedge funds, they're affecting their, pure, their future career prospects. So they sell small investors down the river for their own career. That's what actually happens. Regulatory capture. Regulatory capture. Yeah. Not good. Maybe if you hear it from Elon Musk, who had an affair with uh, uh, Johnny Depp's wife. Um, maybe if you hear it from him, you'll believe it. But anyway, AP, the, the, you don't need um, uh, a panic buy-in or a, or a regulatory buy-in or a compliance buy-in to have, there's no specific magical price. Um, there's no question that Jeff Easton, the face of this crime, along with Philip Vallier, Sam Chung, and Haile Kim, and John Hancock, and their attorneys at Lind Partners, are in trouble. And it's probably their clients, but they're just a face. They're just a front for criminals. Anyway, uh, the key thing to remember is they being, they being the criminals may end up controlling through fraud and collusion and the <clears throat> absolute consent of the greatest criminal of all, Goober Gary Gensler. Remember, he's the one that's in charge of enforcing this. He's ignored it assiduously. Does that make him complicit? I'm not a lawyer, but I think it does. Aiding and abetting, reckless disregard. I don't know. Anyway, uh, if finger starts to trade to 10, 15, 20, 25 dollars, please don't act like Coriander did in AMC and GME. Watch GME, uh, AMC go to 75 dollars and GME go to 400 or whatever happened. Do nothing and then blame everybody because he couldn't take his original money off the table.
I think it's the 258th, uh, 248th birthday. I can, I can talk about gold and silver. Be a nice change. Um, Let's just look at what the prices did at 405. Looks like finger closed at 454. It looks like um, CAUD closed under $3, 297. Looks like Logic closed at 4 cents with the bid of 3 cents, 340. I wish I had some quid. MULN uh, 1978. GTII 5555. What's become of the little boys? And, uh, I feel like I might have left one out, but that's all right. My thing is so slow. So, um, our, our stable full of nags are um, having a little bit of a diff difficult time. So what becomes of all the little boys who never comb their hair? They're lined up all around the block on the nickel over there. All right, gold and silver. Let me, you, you, you catch me out of the blue. I don't have any point to make, but I can make a preliminary couple of points because I would like everyone to own these things. Um, gold, I'll start with. And you know... You know the expression, he who owns the gold writes the rules? Well, after World War II, the United States had the gold. Why? Because allies uh, shipped gold to New York to protect it from the Nazis. And... After World War II, uh, the Bretton Woods system was put in place. And partly because I can't give you the exact details. Um, you, know, you know that um, FDR revalued gold and therefore overnight cut the value of currency. Um, and I'm trying to remember the ratios, but it, it gave a set convertibility of gold into dollars. And my feeble brain, it, I think it was around $35, $35 an ounce. I, I could be wrong. And that pretty much stayed in place in the Bretton Woods system. They went, they went from a mercantile system to a little bit of a free trading currency but it was all about around the idea that you could take your currency, deliver it for gold for a posted price. And that all did pretty well for the United States of America because we had the jobs, we had the infrastructure, we had the gold. Uh, the UN was put in New York. Um, uh, our military uh, bestrode the world. Uh, we took over for the English, the British Empire. 
And uh, uh, everything was great. And we had oil. World War I and World War II were won on U.S. oil. Texas tea. So um, uh, gold remained a boring asset as long as it had a fixed price. Well, we'll fast forward um, both because I can't fill in all the blanks, uh, but I can fill in a lot of them, but it's, it's irrelevant. We'll uh, fast forward to August of 1971. The president of the United States closed the gold window. He said, nix on that. And um, his secretary of state, Henry Doc Kissinger went over to the Middle East and with shuttle diplomacy, he convinced the Saudis primarily, but he, he also talked to the rest of the region, to price oil in dollars in exchange for U.S. military and diplomatic, but the important part was military support for the Saudi royal family and Saudi Arabia. This was a continuation of the relationship established by the frail, dying Franklin Delano Roosevelt on a boat I can't remember the name of, where he met, met uh, uh, King Saud, and they they sketched that very agreement then, and then uh, Harry Truman met with the king, Haya King, uh, on the way to Potsdam or one of those one of those the last conference of the Big free, Three, and ever since then. The United States has been in the corner of the Saudi royal family. The last president, I won't say his name because he stole the election from Hillary Clinton. <laughs> anyway, um, his first international move was to fly to Riyadh. <laughs> his first foreign visit was Saudi Arabia. Anyway, when uh, Nixon took gold off the, when they took the dollar off the gold standard, that, that's when books like uh, Rabbit is Rich by John Updike came out. There was a movement of gold to as high to my memory of seven or eight hundred dollars an ounce. And this made a lot of people rich. And that got the gold bug fever started. And I used to know a lot of gold bugs on Wall Street. But over the last 40 years, the Fed and the magic of um, the control of our government and Congress by the Fed, which is the big banks, Goldman Sachs, they've suppressed that. So gold, gold has been a manipulated uh, commodity, the price, and so is silver. J.P. Morgan is the worst. So. Um, uh, up until recently, Saudi Arabia has shown no inclination of moving off the, uh, the United States dollar. However, Saudi Arabia has been treated completely disrespectfully by the women in charge of foreign policy and the one simp man, 
uh, Blinken, but it's uh, Victoria Newland, it's um, Samantha Powers, it's um, uh, there's one other woman, uh, and now the crown prince in Saudi Arabia not only is hinting, he's actively pursuing military support, possibly from China, India, Russia, or a combination of the both. And he's working with the so-called BRICS um, to price oil in something other than the dollar. This is the gift that the United States' most popular president by votes is giving to you and to your children. Well, it was going to come, I guess, someday. Um, luckily, we've spent, while we've had the exorbitant privilege, as Valerie uh, uh, Gistard Gestang, how do you say his name, the president of France said, that we had. Luckily, we, we used our, our privilege to build out high-speed trains like China, modern airports, modern schools, state-of-the-art factories with robots, uh, uh, ports, and, and an electric grid that is better than any in the world. Uh, we built our power system. We built our we built our distribution systems, and we're the economic engine of the middle class around the world. Oh wait a minute, we didn't do that. China's doing that. India's doing that. So instead of using our exorbitant privilege and and our advantages. We've squandered all that under a political system which started with George W. Bush. Our nation's got to eat. It's a good farm bill. Our nation's got to eat. We have a saying down in Texas. Maybe you have a saying in Tennessee. Fool me once. Well, fool me twice. We ain't going to get fooled again. So George W. Bush um, with Dick Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney Dick Rumsfeld before he Richards you, Dick Cheney before he Richards you, and others, uh, Victoria Newland's husband, Robert Kagan, came up with the new American century. And Wes Clark, that you can look, you can Google it on YouTube, found out that part of that was this is what we did being the world's one superpower we were going to attack and spread democracy like mayonnaise we were going to attack iraq afghanistan libya uh i think yemen was in there um uh, syria Maybe it was Afghanistan, or I already said it. But the seventh one, Iran. We haven't done it yet. Well, then somewhere along the way, the Democratic Party became the war party. Remember Hillary Clinton? We came, we saw, he died. <laughs> well, she attacked Libya. Well, what was, what was Gaddafi proposing? He was, he was proposing to sell oil in, in um, a Pan-African currency, a gold-backed currency. 
Well, the United States couldn't stand for that. What was Saddam Hussein proposing? He was simply proposing selling some of his oil in euros. They, we couldn't stand for that. What was uh, Venezuela, the guy Chavez, proposing? He took his gold back. And then suddenly, for some reason, he was dead. Well, now, what's happened to Venezuela? They've sold all their gold. The gold's gone back to the Federal Reserve and banking system. So anyway... Um, there's an interplay between oil, gold, military power, political power. I'm afraid we've lost our standing, and it's not because of the last president. I think it started when Hillary Clinton had a hissy fit because it was supposed to be her turn. But she'll get another chance, in my opinion, but it, it's probably going to be too late. Um So gold right now is at roughly 2,000. It's probably under. Gold is the dream of a lot of people. I, I'm i really hesitant to get all excited uh, right now about it because I think the United States is going to go to war and the Federal Reserve, the banksters will lead us into it. So that we run our deficit, our debt, sorry, that we talk about, maybe up to 50, 60 trillion dollars. So the banks are full of money and they'll continue to express the price of gold. I think this is done with the cooperation of China, not so much Putin, but I think China wants to build her position, her gold reserves. According to myth or reality, the United States is the world's largest holder of gold reserves. That may or may not be true. I, I don't believe it. But Jim Rickards does. And the fact is, it's not going to matter because we're never going to show that our cupboard is bare. But I think China wants to build enough of a gold position so they're at the table. He who owns the gold makes the rules. So I think right now that it's in the mutual advantage of China and the United States banking system to keep gold prices down. But someday, and, and, and Dr. Stephen Lieb, um, I think it's he. Someone, I'd, I'd have to go back through my notes and my studies. But I think he believes gold can go to $40,000, $40,000 an ounce in a revaluation. Jim Rickards thinks, and of course, we still have the illusion we have the world's greatest financial system and the greatest economy. But Jim Rickards believes that a revaluation of gold to around $10,000 an ounce would balance our debt versus our alarming, uh, uh, well, versus our gold. But it would, it would stop our alarming spinning downward. But we would have to then make sure our economy is taxed properly, growing properly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to stop it there. Jim Willie believes that the dollar will go up, will go up. and then out of existence, and then out of existence. And there may be some truth to that. We may you go to the special drawing rights. We may be at a big table in Shanghai rather than in New York, 
or maybe in in uh, Singapore or in in Moscow rather than in New York, creating the new financial system. I think there'll be a war first, and I think we'll lose that war. But um, all of this is by way of saying that there will come a time, I think, where gold is revalued. Now, does that make you rich? I don't know. The way I see gold is a way of protecting your position as it is right now. Because remember, as gold goes up, dollar values are going down. Jim Sinclair died, unfortunately. And he was a fascinating guy to listen to. But his... his um, uh, Uh, protege, and I think his name is Hoyt or Holt or or I can see him, Bill Holt. Holt. He gold is the place to be. So finally, Gen Z, because uh, I've gone on a little bit too long on this, it gets me to silver, and the, and I'm going to tie in. I want to tie in the gold story. One last thing. I don't, I'm not going to go off on it. But one of the interruptions to gold going up was cryptocurrency. And that's all I'm going to say. So a lot of the money that wanted to bet against the markets and to bet against the dollar went into crypto and did not go into gold. But anyway, um, the ratio... For silver to gold, got as high as 120 to 1. 120 to 1. The United States used to have a stockpile silver. It's gone. And silver, much like oil and gas, I believe natural gas and oil um, typically were, historically and typically, ran at a ratio of about six to one in if you use prices. Um, silver used to trade, and I'm, I'm stretching my memory. I, I don't think it was six to one. I think it was 10 to one, 10 to one versus gold. I still think silver is trading sort of 80 to one, not 120, but in the 80 to one range. Silver is manipulated worse than the stock price of COSM, the stock price of GME, the stock price of CAUD, the stock price of uh, CRTD. Silver is the most manipulated commodity uh, and suppressed on the planet. Oil, oil is manipulated too, and that natural gas but oil is manipulating. So I the thing I want to bring up about silver, Gen Z, is silver is mined almost as an afterthought, but silver, there's no surplus anymore. There's tons, <laughs> tons, ounces, of paper silver created by Blythe, I think she had, was retired, but created by the traders to suppress the price. You think the spoofing and the counterfeiting is amazing in the equity markets. You should watch it in the silver markets. And it's all done with the permission of the Federal Reserve. The banks own, the banksters own the United States government. And you shouldn't fool yourself about that. But but anyway, Gen Z, that, my final point, I want because I want to move on and I'll do better than this. Silver is in medical uh, uh, and, and other products, surgical 
uh, healthcare products. Silver is in uh, computers. Gold is too, but silver's all throughout it. Silver is what? Guess where? It's in missiles. It's in uh, military surveillance. It's in tanks. It's in it's a, everything military. Gold is too, but silver. And 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 gold when it's when primarily when it's mined and put in little cubes, unless the aliens come and take it. <laughs> I'm half joking. Uh, if you ever read about the Anunnaki, but um, uh, silver is mined and it's put in our dumps and our trash because it's in our computers, it's in our pills and medicine, and it's frittered away. But it, the military relies on silver. Uh, all of the new energy relies on silver. AI relies on silver. So my point, Gen Z, is Wall Street, the banksters, and uh, China can keep the lid on gold prices, maybe, maybe. But silver can get out of control because the demand for silver is industrial as well as monetary but it's also the war machine. That that can get out of control more quickly than gold, which is used for jewelry in India and used as a storage of wealth in India. In the West, we don't store our wealth in gold or silver. If 1% of the wealthy move their money to gold, you couldn't catch up. So I think the acquisition of gold and silver in physical form is genius right now. And I think the miners will have their day, although the miners are assaulted by the shorts, the criminal short sellers. So we're, we're, we're going to be on our back foot as a country. Why does anyone protect Jeffrey Easton at the Lynn Partners? That man has a darkened soul and he's stealing not only from you and I, me, he's stealing from the United States of America. Anyway, all right, Jeff, Gen Z, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on from that. If you're looking to buy in your brokerage account, buy Sprott Asset Management. The Sprott Physical Gold Trust or the Sprott Physical Physical Silver Trust. Don't buy anything Morgan Stanley tells you or J.P. Morgan Merrill. Don't buy any of it. It's all it's all crap. Uh, you can trade that stuff, but when push comes to shove, there's no gold in those products. There's no gold in them. Their hills. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm so far behind. I got to I got to hurry on up. I'll go to the doctor Optics Matter, the aptly named Optics Matter. I set up an appointment and I, I it's on my list to do today. I didn't get to it. I'll get it done. I'll do it over the weekend. It's a computerized thing. But it the guy the doctor I'm going to go see He's in so much demand, I think it'll be two months out. But I can I can deal with that. Um, you, I've given you three mulligans today. I'm not going to take any action today. Not going to take any action today. No, I haven't got my CAOD. I haven't gotten any of it. None of it. None of it. And it does piss me off. Mark H, you literally just got it. Well, <laughs> at three bucks, like I said, that's 25 cents. 
And I tell you, Mark, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do a video on it. At, the risk is CAUD could go to 10 while, while you do this. But remember, you still own two thirds of it. I would suggest Monday, of course, they're going to crush the price if I put this recommendation out there. But Mark, if you have CAUD and you sell it for $3, one share, You could buy 75 shares of Logic. I think Logic, as I just went through the long explanation, could go to 15, 15 cents um, with the announcement of the, uh, the, the reverse merger candidate. It could go a lot higher. But that would be a way if it goes to 50, if you bought it at five cents, it goes to 15 cents and you get out. You sold at three. That would be a way of turning that money into almost like nine dollars in CAUD. And then you've got some freedom again. And my opinion is CAUD has some risk to the downside. <clears throat> But I'm glad you're, we're not doing anything today. Monday, I think there'll be a new team, a new sheriff, a new uh, a new um, uh, I don't know what to say, a new boss over at CAUD, and they might start fighting back, and that could snap back as well. Um, Anyway, I'll leave it at that. You just got yours? I didn't get mine. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Nope. I didn't get mine. Happy Veterans Day. You got it five minutes ago and it's tradable. All right. Could it be I got COVID? No, I don't think I got COVID, but it could be. COVID isn't going to make you leave the planet. Don't worry about it. I don't think. You're a healthy guy. but we all have it coming. Um, I set up an email. I set up an email, which um, oh. ah, <laughs> I got a cramp. I set up an email, which I haven't accessed in the complete awful use of that word. I haven't tried to ha gain access to ah, I need a big I need a bigger I need a bigger boat. I hope I spelled it correctly. Yeah, I think I did. It was just, I came up with it. It's kind of a stupid name, but it, it, I, it, uh, it's something you can remember. 
I called it fair and balanced, like fair and balanced, fair and balanced. Fair and my last name, balanced at Gmail. Fair and balanced at Gmail. Fair, fair, fair and balanced at Gmail. Spelled far and balanced at Gmail. And that is a new account. I'm sure I'll get a lot of crap from shills, but I'll, because I got to look into it for US one Tahoe, <laughs> I'll, I'll look at here. All right. M Coriander. I promise not to do anything today. And I won't, but on Monday, if this is the kind of crap that comes up, you have your warning. I will dismiss you and permanently. There's news on CAU. Let me look. God, I took a long time talking about that, that stupid gold, didn't I? <clears throat> See, I have uh, Mexican. I have gout as well. And so my fingers hurt. And I don't, so I don't think it was COVID. I just think it was gout. Um, all right, let's see. I don't see any news on it. All right, so let me work. Where can I find it? Um, I guess I can just go to OTC markets, maybe. I don't see any news. The news on uh, the headline reads five post mergers. I don't see. Let's go to Yahoo. Thanks, David. I don't see it. If you can tell me where to see it, I don't think it exists. Good for you, Skinny Whale. 460. I like the idea of buying logic for a trade, but I know it's high risk. I'm sure there's other things. I like buying finger. <laughs> I love buying finger shares. Oh, decline five days. Um, honey Badger, I am feeling better. Doesn't make me any smarter. Uh, optics matter. Imagine, just for the sake of argument, that you're an organizer of a SPAC. And everybody gives you money, and maybe it's from the shorts, and then they take it all out once you merge a company into your spec. And let's say the whole appeal is you're going to be a NASDAQ listed stock. And in and, and then as the SPAC, you delay your responses so the company runs out of money, cash. You then go to your shorts via the front of a hedge fund and you raise a toxic deal and you, ahead of retail, are able to strip $100 million out of the market cap illegally, fraudulently, but Gary Gensler approves of it. He says, hey, I got to go check out that nice 
tush of Kim Kardashians. Um, uh, hundred million dollars. So you're the you're the group that set up the spec, and you're hoping to make maybe five million someday. Well, on a hundred million dollars, they can pay you off ten million dollars behind the scenes. They can pay off the lawyers. They can pay off the the introducer. Everybody has a massive payday. What they forget is if the United States government can track $600 on Venmo, they can track these, these once, once people wake up to it, they can track it. I know that's great that you got out at 460. I think that's great. I would, I would be tempted to buy some logic for a trade or, um, or, um, Well, 460, you could buy finger one for one. That would be a brilliant move, wouldn't it? Well, God spoke the universe into existence. Um, there's a, um, a guy named Michael Tellinger who's fascinating uh, um he studied the these circles. They're supposed to be to hold cattle in South Africa. Turns out it was probably how gold was mined by the Anunnaki. But anyway, let's not get off onto that. But his argument is vibration, sound. And this is where how the stones for the pyramids and et cetera might have been moved. But he he gives example of what sound and vibration can bring into existence. And so um, God spoke, okay, but it could be God created the, the sound, the vibration, the vibration creating existence. And I'm not, you know, I'm not talking, I've already, anyway, I don't, I don't want to be anti-God at all. Oh, yeah, I knew all about that, Phil. He told me about that. I just forgot. No, I, I just checked my account. I can't trade now. You had cataract surgery? All right, I can't wait. Hey, Susan Michaels. Finger. They've already been to the FBI. I know. I know. I bet they have a lot. Screw that one. Screw that one. Screw it. I can't click it. My computer is maxing out on memory. With so many of these stocks having so many counterfeit shares and the SEC watching porn for the last 20 years, how can we expect to have a market when it crashes down? I agree with you, Skinny Whale. I couldn't get that to click up because my computer is in some sort of freeze mode. Um, Spiny, until they either stuff your account with counterfeit shares or they buy in so you have real shares, what price are they going to give you? And as long as it's restricted, it's in a separate entry on their computers. There's no value. There's no market, public market. I, I don't I don't know. Is this intentional or am I being unfair? If I gave you a hundred dollar bill, and you put it in your bank, it would show up in your bank as $100. If 
I took another $100 bill and I put a big stamp on it and I said, restricted by the authority of the United States Treasury not to be used for six months and you brought it into your bank, they might take the deposit, but it wouldn't show up as valuable until the six months were up. It's not a hard concept. You're just being, you're just being, you're just torturing yourself on purpose. You're, you're literally on purpose torturing yourself. The shares you have in what the fuck shot swab are one share of common stock for every 10 shares of common stock you own. So your 10 shares are showing a value. Get out your calculator for your one share and either take the price per share that what the fuck Schwab is showing for your trading shares or take out for 10 shares, divide it by one, and you'll have what your one share of restricted stock is worth. But until the legend is lifted on those shares, they're restricted. They do not enter into what the fuck Schwab's uh, uh, computerized system, electronic system, so the, the computer can't put into your account a valuation. So either the restriction has not been lifted yet, and that makes perfect sense. It can take days, if not weeks. Or Schwab, uh, uh, what the fuck Schwab hasn't decided yet whether they're going to be complicit with the criminals and just give you electronic IOUs, or they're going to go out and buy the shares in the open market so they can give you an electronic tradable entry in your account. I really think you're destroying your mind. This is not something to get upset about. Mechanically. Now, Spiny Norman, Spiny Norman. On the other hand, the whole point of issuing restricted shares was to gum up the system, was to cause the system to be complicit, to make that choice. Are we going to break securities laws or are we going to buy in the stock? And then West Christian is sitting there ready to see what happens. You're getting it for free anyway. What do you care? It's to try to cause a short squeeze. Why do you want it to go smoothly? The, the less smoothly it goes, the more likely there's going to be a buy-in. I, I don't know, Spiny Norman, how you think. But I respect it. I respect it. Berenstain Fitness. Can someone clarify November 17th to me if possible? All of the option call options are going to expire wor worthless on November 17th unless something happens. Ham said on a call about two weeks ago that he was hearing that there may be a corporate action of some kind. And he said repeatedly, he intimated that it would be a special dividend distribution, that something would happen by the 17th. He never brought it up again. So I don't know if he was told not to talk about it or if it's taken off the table for finger. But you were on the call, you can remember that. And it's not that hard for you to remember that. The only other possibility for finger by the 17th is they 
uh, Berenston Fitness. On September 11th, Finger Motion filed a, a, a shelf registration with the SEC for $300 million worth of offering. They filed an 8K later saying they're not going to raise money down at these prices. But in they also filed an 8K to, to fulfill the requirement of full disclosure to everyone Thursday of that week. The 11th was a Monday. They, in the filing, stated that Univest was their banker. It is possible, Barristan Fitness, that Univest could come up with a $300 million merger, a $300 million joint venture, a, a $300 million acquisition, or a $300 million raise, just straight equity at higher prices. That's possible. But Berenstain Fitness, if you think Univest, a $150 billion franchise run by some of the most conservative and in most cases Chinese trained investment bankers and finger motion, one of the most deliberate, most careful, most uh, 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 check the boxes, cross the T's, dot the I's companies in the world who have built their reputation working with the Chinese government, working partnerships with China Telecom, China Unicom, China Telewoman, and uh, uh, then on the other side, Met Re and Pacific Re, Met Life and, and Pacific Re. And they are working with the world's number one insurance company for Apple Care insurance. And they have SEC lawyers. If you think Barristan Fitness that Univest is going to tell Barristan Fitness material, non-public information that something is happening by November 17th, you shouldn't be in the stock market. It's not going to happen. So I submit to you that Ham has been uh, bullish on Finger every month. Ham is a trader and he trades uh, intelligently, like unlike Mr. Coriander. And he puts he puts his money on the near term month in calls. If the calls go up, he, unlike Mr. Coriander, he takes his original money off the table. So why did Ham talk about November 17th? That's when the call options expire. Now, if you're asking me to guess, if you're asking me to guess, if you're asking me to guess, Barristan Fitness. I think there's a possibility that Finger Motion will announce a distribution of a special dividend of some kind before November 17th. The correlation to finger motion. I, I just answered uh, Barristan Fitness. I really tried to answer without raising my voice. I wasn't successful. 
Brian Edberg, what if you were out at six on CAUD and out at 10 cents in logic? Well, Ryan, I think I would, I would put that money in finger. I think that's a brilliant strategy. But I think what I would do, you seem like a trader and you made a great trade there. I think I would, if it were me, you already own finger. I assume you already own finger. I would buy logic L G L G I Q. And I guess I'm going to have to explain it again, but at four cents a share on Monday morning with the full knowledge, it could go to three cents. It could go to one cents, but can it go below zero? Probably not. Maybe you buy half your position and buy some more at three, buy some more at two. But I'd go ahead and just buy it. Um, in November of last year, Logic signed an agreement to acquire a privately held company. $250 million. The transaction, Ryan, would be executed simultaneously with Logic's pending Aubrey D. SPAC, D. SPAC deal, whereby the confidential target would be acquired to become a wholly owned subsidiary of the Logic shell. Properly structured the post and post-transaction, post-Aubrey SPAC transaction, which happened. So the CAUD is gone. The combined entity is expected. That means the combined shell and the PRIVCO, the private co, are going to apply for NASDAQ or NYSC uplisting. Well, what are the, we know this. It's 250. What's one of the facts we know? They let this one expire because they were seeing the cream of the crop deals. So they're going to do one that's better than this. This was 40, 50, no, sorry, six, no, 40, 50, 60 cents a share. That's what was discussed at the time to you. Well, there's, in the meantime, in the year, more than the shares more than doubled. So for it to be better than 40, 50, 60 cents, it would have to be double the $250 million, probably more than double the $250 million. So that, if we just double it, that's $500 million. In, in what Logic gets for giving its shell is probably going to be 10%, an eighth, 12.5%, or 15% of the value of a NASDAQ or NYSC traded stock. What's the predicate? The predicate is after uh, logic D SPACs, data logic into Aubrey SPAC and Aubrey SPAC D SPACs into CAUD, what is, which has been a complete cock up. But that's one predicate. The second predicate, well, there's one other predicate that you voted on. Um, you had there had to be a reverse split of either 35 to 50 for one. That will only be effected when the reverse merger is finalized. So that the criminals have no chance to crime. When's the timing of it? Well, it says right here, the transaction would be executed simultaneously with Logic's pending Aubrey D. SPAC deal. Well, simultaneously in, in financial terms probably meant it should have been effected last week. But what's a week? What's next week? That's still pretty simultaneously. 
in geologic terms simultaneously could be 10,000 years. But anyway, if we take the definition of simultaneously and we know that Aubrey SPAC um, CAUD have been despacked. We know that uh, Brent has been looking at deals better than this deal. I ran through the arithmetic earlier. My guess is it's worth about 40 cents a share when they announce it. When could they announce it? If you were Brent, when would you announce it? The way you said you would? After the law, maybe the lawyers have to go through the probably 100 page legal document. Remember, lawyers kill deals. Lawyers don't care about the stock market. They get paid to edit prospectuses. So it takes some time. But do you think Brent's going to try to speed that up and get that announced next week? Or do you think he'll delay? I don't know. That's your call. How much lower can logic go? It's four cents. Go to zero, I suppose. Is that likely? I doubt it. Go to a penny. Could. Could go to two cents. Could. Could go to three cents. Could. But we know... This is coming. And to be better than this deal, it would have to be worth 70, 80 cents a share. I'm not using that number. I'm using 40. So then, Ryan Edberg, what you have to decide is are the criminals in charge or is the system so good there's really not been that much short selling? So maybe the stock just goes to 20 cents on the announcement and on the completion, which would probably be about six to eight weeks later because you have to do an audit before the final monies cross hands, the, the final signatures. So if you buy at four cents and let's sell, say you sell at, 16 cents, that's four times your money, Ryan, four times your money. You can then take that money and buy Finger. What's the risk? Finger runs first. So I think, I think first priority of the money that you raised, I think would be Finger shares. Secondly, I think because this is sitting there, has nothing to do with CAUD, it's been announced. Um, uh, you know it, but in your heart, you're going, oh, the stock price is down. Something's wrong. Well, you know it. This is when you fight what your gut is, your fear is telling you. You can buy logic at four cents. It's going to have a reverse merger into what it, logic is a shell, into something it could be announced next week. It could be announced in six weeks. That's your risk or eight weeks. But if it's a definitive agreement, it could be worth 40, 50, 60, 70 cents a share. I go with the lowest number. Now, how will it trade afterward? Well, two ways if you're, if you're negative, which I think is a logical way to be. One is the criminals are in control and they're going to drive it downward and they're going to keep the pressure on. But remember, Ryan, we are going to own an eighth or 15% or 10% of a NYSE, NASDAQ, one or the other listed stock worth $600 million, whatever it is. With revenues with institutional buyers, with a reverse split, with profits. It's going to be hard for the criminals to crime against that. So I think 
it's a worth. I don't think the criminals are going to be able to keep the stock at four cents. Maybe they can only, they'll fight back at 20 cents or 15 cents or 10 cents. But as a trade, I'd be getting out at 10 and 15 and 20 and 25. Secondly, if you, um, from the bluebird side, oh, the system, there's systems in place, there's not really a short. Definitely, I'd sell at 10 cents, 15 cents, 20 cents, 25 cents. But if you're like me and you believe the criminals have not only uh, ha had some allies that shorted real shares, but they've also counterfeited shares. And all of a sudden, this deal is announced as definitive, and it's pending a six-week audit. I know in, uh, in this life, we can't wait six weeks. But let's just say it's a two-month audit. Well, when it's finalized, when it's fine, the audit's finished and the and it and it happens, all of a sudden all those shorts are caught what? Short criminals too. And per just perhaps the stock goes to 40 cents or higher in a miniature short squeeze. I'm not talking about anything above 40, 80, maybe a dollar. Dollar twenty-five in a in a run-up. Well, your four cents becomes forty cents. What is that? That's ten x. That's not a bad risk reward trade, Ryan. It's blood in the streets. It's at you already acted, and I congratulate you on it. I mean, I think that's amazing. I I didn't have a chance to sell CAUD. I didn't sell Logic. Because I'm not convinced yet that there isn't a chance that they'll re uh, re record date the whole thing, because I haven't gotten my CAUD yet. But once I get my CAUD, that won't be uh, a problem anymore. So um, I think that's brilliant. So. If I were in your shoes, I would buy Logic at four cents. Um, I would, as it as the announcement comes, which could be next week, but it could be January too. And the stock could go lower; it could go to three cents or two cents. But you know the reverse merger is coming. What I would do is take whatever that money is, buy it. What? When it when the mer reverse merger is announced, the stock's going to go up. I would take my original, the money you're investing right now, I would take that off the table, put it in finger. I'd let, let the rest run. And as that goes off, put it in finger. Or, or just do all finger or do it 50-50, something like that. I think finger is the number one stock to buy right now. But I think there is a trade in logic sitting right. The logic shell, by definition, it's a shell. You know they're going to put a reverse merger candidate in it. It's been announced. You know, anyway, you heard me. Um. Uh, Upsoft, I haven't heard anything specific about GoLogic, but let me tell you, GoLogic is a similar, GoLogic is a fintech company. They are distributing the fintech to RCRT. That was voted on. There's some co sort of complicated thing. RCRT is listed on NASDAQ. I'm sure the criminals are involved there. They're going to distribute the fintech there. And then GoLogic is a shell, and it's the same story. They have big things going on. Um, it's not ASPA. It's not the ASBA team. It's not the advisor, the financial advisor to ASBA. 
It's not the two criminal uh, hedge funds, or at least the two hedge funds that are fronts for criminals. I mean, it's in it's in our face. It's a totally different story. Brent's son is the CEO right now, but there'll be a new there'll be a new team. And if I had to guess, go logic. is going to give you a return bigger than what logic was promising was the promising in the sense of a, of a, of a, uh, let's use let's pick a different word what what logic was project what the, the returns which were projectable by buying logic basically 8 to 12x I think GoLogic will do better than that. But you might have to wait, and you might have to wait months, and that's not something people like to do. But it, uh, And by the way, uh, we'll see what we need to hear the game plan out of uh, CAUD. We need to hear the game plan from GoLogic. But in six months, nine months, a year, I think both could be doing a lot better. These are go logic in particular, although it's not logic's not immune to being associated with Southeast Asia. Remember Upsoft 88. Brent's son introduced Univest to Finger. What does that mean? He met him at a bar? Or do you think he was working with Univest? Do you think there's a possibility that Univest might come in and work with GoLogic in Southeast Asia? I think I answered that question. Um, I think the news on Finger November 17th is going to be that all uh, call options above $6 expire worthless. You want my beard back, Barriston Fitness? I don't know. <laughs> I have pognagophobia. Are we headed downhill like a snowball? Are we racing downhill like a snowball headed for hell? You know what, what Mick Jagger sang? Mick Jagger does a live version of down where Bob Wales is still the king. In all the dances and the dances of the country, home of country swing. Rolling Stones. The best song of the Rolling Stones is, um, um, well, at least for a period in my life, <laughs> I thought it was the best. It was Hannah Honey was a peachy kind of girl. Her eyes were hazel and her nose was slightly curved. We spent, <clears throat> I got, I started too high. We spent a lonely night at Mamory Hotel. It's on the ocean. I guess you know it well. It took a starry to steal my breath away down on the waterfront. Her hair all drenched in spray. And a baby was a honey of a girl. Her eyes were hazel. And her teeth were slightly curved. 
She took my guitar and she began to play. I, I can't get the melody. She, I, I always do, but I got the words wrong. She sang a song to me, stuck right in my brain. You're just a memory of a love that used to be. You're just a memory of a love that used to mean so much to me. She got a mind of her own and she used it well. Well, she's one of a kind. She's got a mind. She's got a mind of her own. I can't get the lyric. And she used it might have fine. Oh, and this is the one I always sing. She drove a pickup truck, painted blue and green. Uh, sorry, painted green and blue. The tires were wearing thin. She turned a mile or two. When I asked her where she headed for, back up to Boston, I'm singing in a bar. I got to fly today on down to Baton Rouge. My nerves are shot already. The road ain't all that smooth. Across in Texas is the Rose of San Antone. I keep on a feeling that's gnawing in my bones. You're just a memory of a love that used to mean so much to me. You're just a memory, girl. You're just a sweet memory, and it used to mean so much to me. Sha-la-la-la. -la -la. She's got a mind of her own, and she used it well, mighty fine. She's one of a kind. On the seventh day, my eyes were all ablaze. We've been 10,000 miles, been in 15 states. Every woman seemed to fade out of mind. I hit the bottle and hit the sack and cried. What's all this laughter on the 22nd floor? It's just some friends of mine, and they're busting down the door. Been a lonely night at Memory Hotel. Hannah, honey. I'm sorry, I couldn't get the melody in my, in my voice. And I don't want to, I don't want to play it because um, I did it the other day. I don't want to push my luck. But Memory Hotel, is, I think, is one of their finest songs. And I wonder if it was written by Keith Richards or sung by him. Let's see the overview. Uh, one theory, it's about Carly Simon and your so vain, maybe. Um, Here, let's see what Wikipedia, the always reliable source. It's a ballad from the English rock band Rolling Stones, 1976. Yeah, great album, Black and Blue. Um, oh, they share the league vocals. vocals. Okay, so that's why I'm... <clears throat> Jagger began writing the song 
after beginning the Stones tour of Americas while staying at Richard with Richard at Andy Warhol's house in Montauk, Montauk, New York, and finished it while on tour. This is reflected in the song's lyrics where Jagger describes having to leave for Baton Rouge. The title comes from an actual motel on Montauk, Long Island. The lyrics to the song have long drawn speculation as to who the Hana baby is, and maybe it's Carly Simon. The lyrics talk of a fading love brought on by a one night stand at the hotel. Richards did not play guitar on the track, but contributed Cole lead vocals. I knew I heard his voice in there. Oh, Billy Preston is on there. Ron Wood. Well, anyway, so much for memory hotel. That's my, Laura, that's not my best Rolling Stones effort, but I did that for you. Uh, I just don't want to play music today. Floaters are a symptom of mercury toxicity. Ugh. I don't have any floaters now. Hey, not legal advice. Run, run. <laughs> oh, the alarm. I'm so far behind. You guys must be wondering, what questions am I in? Candles in another room? No, I think it might be something going on upstairs, and maybe it comes under the front door. I, I sometimes think it's my landlord just uh, showing me he can he can control my life. Mm hmm. JB, I agree with that. I think the SEC has to stop being a self-regulatory organization. It has to be independent. It should be a government. Um, uh, department like the State Department or the FBI or the Justice Department. If you accept a career there, you have to work a minimum of 10 or 15 or 20 years unless you're fired and then you won't get a job at, on Wall Street or as a lawyer anyway. And it's got to be its own career. Hi, Heidi. I'm way behind. I'm sorry I didn't say hi earlier. Thank you for being there. Carbon monoxide because of all my spewing of nonsense? Could be. Finger reminds me of Apple or Amazon when they were small. I think that's exactly right. The, the only question you have to acknowledge is... Fingers growth in China is going to be subject to government fiat. And, and uh, we don't know the competition that well. But I agree with you. I think Finger could be an Apple or an Amazon or, a, or a, you know. trying to think of another one that no one thinks of, but I can't. You didn't miss Ham today. Everybody was stuck to me with me. Ham is just a memory of a love who used to be. We'll get, I'll get Ace on. Ace is a wise a wise man.
Hey, Dos Equis. I'm going to go quickly. I'm not going to give everybody. Um, I think that's great. Look to, of the stories that I'm most familiar with, I would look to finger number one. I think GTII will run after finger goes. Remember that. But I think there's a little trade in logic, maybe 3x, 4x on, on the conservative side. That's really high risk. I think the lowest risk, uh, the lowest risk um, trade on offer is finger. If you buy, if you buy, if you buy the stock and are willing to wait. <laughs> um, I'm going to continue to continue to pretend. I'm not going to do anything until Monday. But if I don't see an indication that you're not here just to FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, on Monday or Tuesday, whenever I'm next live, it's going to be a close call. I'm I'm feeling better. Um, um, have you seen the doctor? Yes, and he has seen me. Wow, that's a lot of stock of a company that's in trouble with their financing, but is a brilliant story. I love what they do. So I don't, I'm, I'm not going to give advice, but that's a nice position. I, I, I wish you the best. I wish you the best of luck. I can't answer that. Um, another sad day. I don't know. I think, you know, it's all how you look at it. Um, if you're in finger, for a squeeze or for much higher prices, this just gives you time to add to it. It's normal. It's like a river going to the shore. It's normal. It's like waves that go back and forth. So, Anyway, jewelry affairs, I really think you should get out of the stock market. <clears throat> but if you're in it, I think this wasn't a bad day. I don't think it's a bad day. I think uh, finger number one should be bought. I think for me, logic presents, but you don't want to hear it. You just want to focus on sadness. Because you know there's a reverse merger candidate coming, I think it, it just is a highly pounceable trade candidate. And other people, uh, uh, this gentleman, Ralph, has CLNV. There might be others taking advantage of the sell-offs rather than go, oh, it's a sad day. But, but um, if you're stuck in logic, for example, and you can't buy anymore, this is good news that might come and you can get out at 10, 15, or 20. Finger, there's nothing wrong with finger except it's the ongoing fraud. What do you think? The fairy godmother's gonna uh, swipe her wand, and Gary Gensler is gonna grow up and suddenly look down, and he, he has a pair down there. When he goes to take a piss, he's gonna actually have to stand up. There's no want magic wand in the world that's going to get where to fraud jewelry, jewelry affairs. But I don't think it's a sad day. But anyway, I spent enough of time on your comment. Hi, Dips Patel. And you didn't get out? You didn't get out? That's even worse. So you 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 bought it at 10 or 15 
and it rose to the 40s and it started to run at 72 and you didn't take any money out? You know, your argument makes it worse. I admitted I did not watch this stock until after it hit the news pages. But I, I don't know. I don't know why that argument makes what I said was wrong. You say in your own story, it slowly moved over months. Then it rose to the 40s. You didn't take any money off the table at 10 and 15 or at the 40s. You didn't take any money off the table, your original money. And then it went to 7-2. You didn't double your money off the table. You know, pal, I, I, you expect a lot. You, you expect that maybe you bought the stock at five and it goes to 70. You expect that your own greed and your own really I've made the mistake myself. I've made my mistake many times. But if you can't take responsibility for not at least taking a profit out of that trade, that's on you. And I can tell you story after story in my own life where I should have taken a profit. So I'm not picking on you. But at least I'm not blaming him or blaming the market or blaming everything's all the same. Anyway, that's enough. You got me to respond to one of your comments or two. But I, you're still in the penalty, but not the penalty. You still have a warning all over you. Ooh, ooh, that smell. Hey, Don Fizz, how are you? You look like you should be in that movie, The Matrix. The Ma the, the Matrix. Um, let's see, not legal advice. Am I an ex-Marine sergeant? No. Oh, you get even more coverage while, while my phone screams. You know what? I'm not going to respond anymore. That makes sense. That makes sense. Look, I I don't know why I've told you guys GME and AMC are completely under control and I wouldn't be in them. And I've said that for what, three years? Of course, I haven't talked to you for all that time. But What becomes of little boys? Okay, I'm not going to talk about those two stocks. Well, social watch only, I would put up, depending on how many shares you have, I would put up the $100 cash, but they're just making excuses to you. That's all they're doing. They're just making excuses. But a hundred dollars in each account, I would, I think that would be anything to get my stock out. I'm telling you guys, there will come a point where you no longer have the option of moving over at ASD, and there will be hundreds, if not thousands, of shareholders bemoaning that they can't get over to AST. So I would spend the hundred dollars. They're lying to you. It should have already been done. But um, I also would tell them that you, if you choose to, tell them you don't want to pay. This is something that should have happened automatically. But I don't think it's worth getting into an argument for 100 shares in an account. Everything in the banks is fees now. You know that. You open a credit card, it's $150. You, you bounce a check. It's at least thirty-five dollars. You you uh, 
you know, open an eye, everything's fees. So I wouldn't get I wouldn't get hung up on a hundred dollars. That is an ALF mug. Oh, not legal advice. Did you get it? Not legal advice. Hardy, har, har. Where do animals go when they lose their tail? They go to the retail store. Where do... I think this is genius optic matters. Good for you. I think that action you're going to be very happy with. I think your shares should be in Nextbridge at the transfer agent. I'm just, um, I don't know why I'm procrastinating on my IRA. I probably have to get down there. Yes, I'll name five stocks that will double in the next five days. The inventory of uh, Christmas decorations down at CVS. The inventory of turkeys at Safeway for Thanksgiving. The... um, uh the stock of um of canned goods at the food shelter you get my point um bill sometimes you ask on people ask you an honest question you take them as a show even though they love your opinion. I, yeah, I, I'm probably wrong with that. And, uh, um, it's hard reading just one out of context. I sometimes make that mistake. I accept your criticism and I think you're, and I think you're correct. Uh, there's no battery on it. It's somehow electric. Lucky is maybe maybe the dog maybe he had gas to pass. Now it's it's electric it's an electric thing. Uh, I think I'll I'll check it though. It's it's way up. <laughs> That's very good. God, I'm way behind if you're talking about batteries. Uh, Ordinary Angler. A very dear um, investor asked me that question when the stock was probably around, I don't know, 17 cents. And I suggested going into Logic which depending on how that resolves itself uh, doesn't look like much of a, of a suggestion. Although I think if you add the shell logic with the CAUD right now, she's ahead of the game, but not anywhere near what I thought so far. But the other part of what I said to her 
is that MMAT's financing is just destructive and the criminals are going the criminals are just going to counterfeit shares. And yes, I think they'll keep driving it down. I think that'll be a five cent stock or lower. And it doesn't matter how good the story is. Their goal, if they can do it, ordinary angler, is to get it under a penny. They they want to they want a seller box any stock they can so that they can take their money out without having to pay taxes. I mean, it's a it's an evil scheme. It's an evil scheme. But yeah, I'd be really careful. Now, having said that, ordinary angler, uh, one thing you can do, and you can't predict the bottom, but one thing you can do whenever you think, you could double your position in MMAT now, and then in 31 days, sell your original position you might sell it if you doubled it at 10 cents. You might sell that original position. And it might by then be at four cents. But then you've locked it. Then you've taken a loss on that part. And your new position in this example would be underwater. But at least you would never have been out of it because I'm sure you're in it because you believe there's going to be this magical big contract and huge revenues. And that could happen. And all of the stock, a sudden the stock could be much higher. But um, uh, the most likely thing is they're going to suppress the stock. The other way you can do it is get out now, wait 31 days and buy it back. But then you have the risk that the stock goes up. Look, there can all, all dead cats bounce and um, there could be a contract that's so big with cash infusion, or there could be a buyout of the company for five bucks, but, you know, and that changes the calculus. But I think they're going to continue. If you know, I don't know everything about the company, uh, the finance, you know, who the shorts are, but I my guess is they're going to keep driving it down. And if it gets down to five cents, then maybe you can double your position or triple your position. And after 31 days, sell the original position so you establish a tax loss. Because you're going to need, in my judgment, tax losses to offset the gains you're going to get in MMTLP at some point when they make a settlement. I'm going to give GTII until Christmas uh, to squeeze and I'll find something else to roll my losses into. I wouldn't wait. I wouldn't wait, JB. If you feel that way, get out of GTII now. Because if that's what you want to do by Christmas, I mean, I'm think I'm speaking hypothetically, but also from experience. If I have a strategy, I'm going to wait for Christmas. By then, it might be 25 cents. So if you're if you're just telling yourself, I I I'm not gonna I'm not I don't want to be in GTII for a squeeze. Just get out, take your loss, go into finger. I think number one, but you have fewer units of upside with finger. But I think you have a better chance. But if, if you want to make a trade, and I'll give you other ideas, it's just right now I've only presented this one, so it's on my mind. Buy, buy roll your money into logic at four cents. If it goes to 15 cents, 20 cents, get out, 10 cents, get out. Get out as it goes up, and then you have more money. Wait, then wait till Christmas to buy back GTII because it's more than 31 days. There'll be plenty of tax loss selling. Buy back GTII in the last week of the year and, it's, and double your position in GTII. But don't sit like a statue. Don't wait. Do something. Do it Monday morning.
I don't know anything about subscribe or like or thumbs up. I don't I don't pester people for those. Apparently, if you hit the thumbs up bunny button, it it helps give something to me. But I never ask about it. I it's one of the most annoying things when people uh, do that. You've got finger sixes for five cents. I love it. I love it. I think that's a great strategy. Busy Brands did it. I think that's how to trade. When nobody else wants it, go ahead and go out and buy it. I love it. I love what you did, and I love what Busy did. If I wanted to day trade, I would have hired a money manager to do this. Well, go hire a money manager. But I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you to day trade. But JB, good Lord. If, if Here's your restriction. I don't want to give my money to a money manager. I don't want to trade. I just want to buy a stock and stand like a statue. I mean, that's a recipe for losses. But I'm not telling you to day trade. I'm telling you the market in stocks, you know, things are going on, are giving you an opportunity for a trade. For a trade. But don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just just wait for Christmas. See what happens with GTII. And then make a new decision. It's a strategy. Elon, Elon gets it. Elon gets it. I agree with that, JB. The government has to close the revolving door. It is the exact same thing they're doing to Finger and every stock. Optics. Many of the CEOs of small OTC companies are complicit. They take knowing i agree with you i agree with you why sign that why sign it they wouldn't sign it on their own house maybe that's the rule if if uh, they sign a top a convertible note for the business they have to put up their house as collateral Oh, Lucky's doing good. He looks like he wants to go outside and get his treats. And I'll give that to him. I'm gonna, I'm going quickly because I realized uh, how far behind I am. All right, I can't wait. PS seventy one. CAUD, I don't think there's anything, any reason for CAUD to go up that anybody knows about. The possible reasons are a dead cap bounce, number one. Number two, legitimate shorts might have bought back their shares because they know a winning trade when they see one. Three, next week, I mean, it, or the following week, it's obvious the management team at, at ASPA gone, although some might percolate over. There's going to be a new team at the helm next week or the following week, number three. Four, there could be rumblings of a narrative coming out. What are we going to do? Are we going to follow our plan? Are we going to roll up three or four more companies in there? Is Data Logic continuing to provide revenues? Are, what is our strategy? Four. Five, maybe they're talking to someone about financing that is honest rather than the criminal. Maybe they're going to fight back. Those are five or six reasons I can think of. But I would, I would, 
I would be very careful with C A U D. F O R K E W I N N I. I would be. Hang on, I'm going to take this. Fulcrum. I'm going to take this.
All right, I took that Welcome. call. I took I took that call because, and I'm way behind. You probably noticed, but CAUD is trading for five dollars and fifty one cents. Five dollars and fifty one cents. Um, I was hoping for some news. There was a, a a tweet put out, and apparently there's a strategy coming for CAUD trading at five dollars and fifty cents. The volume is four million shares. I'm going to try to get down these quickly because I know I'm way, way, way behind. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm the slowest poke in the poke. Are pokes calves and they go in a poke or are pokes? I don't know. See, you can tell I worked on a, on a ranch. <laughs> I, I never did. Um, I'm, I'm going to move quickly. Uh, uh, that's a good question. Is he aware of it or lets it go be, or is he powerless? I, my working theory is just to be simplistic, Goldman Sachs controls the Fed, Goldman Sachs controls the government and the Treasury. But I, obviously, it's not just Goldman Sachs. Uh, John Croson, since you're talking about, why not talk gold platinum ratio and how cheap platinum is? I will, but I don't know it. <laughs> you You know more about that than I do. I've always been interested in platinum, but I've never really focused on the story. So I, I'll, I will. I'll learn it. John, I haven't studied uh, gold or silver for a few years, but I, I, I'm going to do it intensely again. But man, it used to be if you asked me a question, you got you got everything but the atomic weight of each of those. All right, let me um, see if I can find this tweet. Okay. Let me see if I can get this. Ah. Um, Call for him. L U C I A B R D A. Um, I gotta call him back. Darn it. Um. Okay. This this just went up on Twitter a while ago, and I'll read it to you. Investors, take note. This is from Chris, Chris Lacroissier. Investors, take note. I just got a response from CEO Brent Sun on the manipulation in his new NASDAQ company, CAUD, and I'm confident he will bring the stock back up with strong institutional investors. So let me interpret before I read any further. Um. What the criminals try to do, and they've done it in every stock, they try to put you in a position where you take just enough money, you're like the little, you're like the little scared girl hooked on heroin who turns to prostitution. You have no money, you have no place to sleep, and you go back to the pimp. That's exactly what these men who are either the hedge funds or the clients of the hedge funds. They're no better than drug pushers or pimps. That's how evil they are. So they leave the company without enough money and then the company has to go back to them. So they, the pimps drive the price down. When you go back to the company, if you take another note or financing, 
you become a seller box company. Well, it sounds like what Brent has done and I'm interpreting, and I've also spoken to Brent, um, is he's located probably honest, plain vanilla financing, not from these forked tongue devils like Jeff Easton who sit in an office and pretend to raise money. They're just fronts for a criminal enterprise that is so large, I don't know if the US Marine Corps will make it to its 250th birthday. All right, let's read it to you. Although my eyesight is so bad. Um, we have a, a number of accretive acquisitions num lined up. NASDAQ will help propel us to new heights. And he put it out. Peter Boards is joining as CEO of CAUD. There's a good size short position out there. What if the group, see, I told you this. What if Univest, I'm using the word, what if Univest came over and helped? That's what I think is going to happen. I've said it so many times. Brent's son introduced Univest to finger motion. And there it is. Here it is. Listen to this from Brent. And this is on Twitter. As you know, I introduced finger to Univest when it was $1.80 a share, finger. We've been waiting to de spec so I couldn't go back and talk to them about working with us, primarily because they work with Asia and NASDAQ companies. We have a significant number of accretive acquisitions lined up that we mentioned the past year. I envision working with them for this reason and certainly the attention they can bring to us. Anyway, that's on Twitter. Let's see where it's trading. So what my interpretation of that, one, one, and I, I've been implying it. One, Univest is going to come help Brent son at CAUD. Two, they have some financing, so they're not going to be trapped like the poor little girl with the needle in her arm that has to go back to the pimp. They're going to be in a safe memory motel with a nice TV and good food and uh, uh, a cop down on the corner to protect her. They have financing lined up that'll get them through this. Three, three, um, it sounds like... Uh, this CEO of Peter Bordes is happening soon, Boards. And that means a new team, a new narrative, and a new fight. So uh, um, I think the shorts are going to be in trouble. And that's why I think you saw covering. It's now 473. Of course, they're going to try to. But remember, their strategy to drive it down ain't going to work. It ain't going to work now. Now you're getting your hopes up. There's no ham call tonight. Unless he calls me, it's possible. I got to get through this so I can go walk my puppy dog. Here, I better charge my phone so when I walk him.
I'm just saying it's not only the talk at Slender's there. Oh, I, I think Wall Street, everybody's complicit in this. It's too much money. Um, I have... Hmm. Let me think about KYP, whether I, I'm too tired. Let me think about whether I want to answer that question. And I'm trying to be respectful. I'm not disrespectful. He might call in. He hasn't happened. It hasn't happened. He might call in. Oh, what's this? Stop yelling. Your blood pressure is going up and it's not good for your eyes. I'm sorry, T. Alex. I'm sorry, T. Alex. You know, T. Alex, there's one thing I have, which I won't explain right now, but I have a bad... What's weird is it used to be this year. Now it's this year that's worse. So um, I sometimes raise my voice without meaning anything. Uh, my dad used to get mad. So sorry, I sorry I hurt your ears, and uh, I'll try. I really will try to do better. I think that's great. I was I really yelling? I'm so sorry. I, I may be, you know, I may um, have to go into a mental institution and get some sort of test. The only problem is I they may never let me out. I didn't realize I was yelling. I apologize for that. Um, that that could be a squeeze, but it could also be that remember um, the stock ASPA was eleven dollar, well, almost eleven dollars, basically for a year after the deal was announced. So. And, and then CAUD, ASPA slash CAUD, ran to $38 before all this criminal activity happened. Yes, it could be a squeeze. It could be the, the day traders who went in selling stock they don't own are covering so they're not exposed to whatever's coming Monday. I, I made up Monday. But my guess is with that kind of permission from Brent Sun to put out a text message stream on Twitter that I just read to you. Uh, I, they're in full fight back mode and I would expect something uh, more definitive Monday. So yeah, some of the shorts could be saying we don't want to be short this over the weekend. Yeah, so that could be part of the squeeze. Um, I think it's a, it could be a dead cat bounce and you got to be careful of that. But I think more likely, David, after I read that Twitter of, of Brent's text message, it seems to me that CAUD wants to get back at a minimum to that $10, $11 level that reflects the value of a third party analysis of the acquisition of data logic with its revenues, which this ASCPA traded at all day long, all week long, all month long for a year, 10 to $11. So 
Um, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe we get back to ten or eleven dollars on on uh, on um, Monday, Tuesday. It's hard. This is volatility, and it's hard to predict. Hard to predict these things. Um, so, six. I didn't see the six dollars. That's amazing. Hey, Michael Burrows. Again, people. I'm people who complained. Machato, machatos. I'm sorry. I was yelling. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't realize it. Here, Ralph is saying my blood pressure. You do work in men's shoes and socks. <laughs> I sold shoes in um, when I was in high school. I was the number one salesman. I always got the gold star <laughs> week after week. I had my secrets. I'm not going to share them with you. What's going on here? Are you saying because I raised my voice? I don't know how to go back and take it back. I'm sorry. Uh-oh, another guy, I guess I have to. All right, I'll ignore him, BBJ. Thank you. I trust your, I trust your um, uh, uh, admonitions to me. Machaka M. Yes, sir. Um, or yes, ma'am. I hope it I hope it's at five right now. I hope it opens at 10 on Monday. And then maybe the gentleman who asked about a squeeze, maybe it goes to 25 or 38, like it was trading. Who knows? You don't know. Four millions. All right. I now I don't remember which one. I'm gonna, I'm going to. Uh, dismiss people. So then once dismissed, I don't have to make the choice anymore. I'll, I'm, I'll do that. I don't know if Gary Gensler has hundreds of dollars in a safe. A uh, CAUD Oh, uh, AP, AP, I just on that call, I found out there's only three companies at least earlier in the day that had, had received or had put shares in people's accounts. Whether they received them or not, I don't know. Because I think all of the shares going out from Logic are all restricted. But anyway, it's uh, Schwab Ameritrade. Fidelity and Pershing. So I assume TDA is Ameritrade. So it's Schwab Ameritrade. Fidelity and Pershing are the ones that put stock in people's accounts. Uh, he confirmed that E-Trade, they haven't, they haven't done it yet. So anyway, um, uh, it'd be interesting to see you, you, you have an interesting choice. Should you sell while they're covering today in the aftermarket just in case they get their shite together and sell it off again Monday morning? Or do you wait for what this tweet stream implies, which might be positive fight back from the com company CAUD Monday morning? I don't know. There will be a back and forth. But I think it's a flip, a bit of a flip of a coin, but I think it's going to go to 10 bucks or so Monday or Tuesday now. Based on what this is new information, I'll read it again, what, the, what it says one more time. 
All right. So you got it. So that's TD Ameritrade. The three companies, Schwab, Ameritrade, Fidelity, and Pershing. So by the way, with Coriander, I did it temporarily. I didn't, it's it's not permanent, but it might end up being. Um, Vegeta, um, I was getting, oh, that's maybe where I was raising my voice. I don't know. I was getting frustrated with that. I look, I can give you, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bore you, but you know, when I was, when I was about 26 or 27, I made my first million in a stock if I just sold, but I didn't sell because I believed the story and was going to keep going. By the time I sold, I made some money, but I didn't. I didn't lock that in, and I've I've made that mistake again many times. So I don't mean to criticize anybody that didn't sell, but I don't think I I don't think it's fair to say that those trades didn't work. I I wasn't in those trades. I only found out after, about them after the fact. So I don't have a dog to hunt in that in those stories. I just think you can't punish yourself by feeling trapped and, oh, the market never worked. There, it's right there in front of you. And so Vin Vegeta, if you're in Finger, for example, to, to make an analogy to AMC and GME, if it starts to run, take your original money off the table or take double your money off the table at some price. So at least you have a winning trade and then let the rest run, you know, but anyway, Vegeta, I'm, I, I'm not trying. I can't remember how the conversation went. So it went, so I'm, uh, um, I'm not going to recreate it right here, but I'm not trying to say that everybody, the hardest thing Vegeta to do is to sell. It is the hardest thing to do. Even professionals screw it up. Oh, it might have a battery backup. I see. I have to get my, I have a tall ladder. I have, it's way up on the thing. So I'll do that. Thank you, Doug. That makes sense. Um, I, ho I hope uh, Clarissa is listening and she's doing well. All right, this guy goes in a timeout. Okay. This guy goes in a timeout. So I'm too loud. I'm sorry, ring ring the bell. And I have to get I have to get the what you call it close caption in there. Um I, yeah, I've got to do that. That's all right. At least you had a winning trade. I did that. I did that all. Uh, I did that all uh, without any prep. Wow, look at that. Yeah, Michelle, um, I also, I too uh, don't have CAUD, but CAUD. Uh, I'm not going to go. I bored everybody. 
But a year ago, Logic sold Data Logic as a private company, as a distribution to Aubrey SPAC. Aubrey SPAC last week or two weeks ago now, de spacked into CAUD. Everybody that owned Logic gets one share of CAUD for every 12 shares of Logic they owned, but by the proxy, only 33% of those shares are distributed. So if you get it, it's 33% of what you will ultimately get. I haven't gotten mine yet because I'm at E-Trade. My understanding is I just read out Schwab, Ameritrade, Fidelity, and Pershing are the only companies putting stock in people's accounts, which they're doing of their own their, their own want because the shares being delivered by Logic to DTCC, as I understand it, to the transfer agent right now or to the broker deal it are restricted right now. That restriction will come off. It doesn't have anything to do with the six months. I don't understand all the details. So, uh, but anyway, there you go. Good evening. Hey, I might've come to the bottom. All right. So everybody, I appreciate that you put up with me. I'm going to have to learn to keep my voice low. I'll, I'll put a reminder up here. One, two, I'll um, check my emails. Three, um, um, there was one other thing I had to do. Oh, close caption. I'll try to remember to do that too. Um, yes, yes, BBJ, yes. Whatever you get is only, I mean, approximately a third. As you can tell, BBJ, that's not 33.333, which I made that mistake the other day when I was doing the arithmetic. For some reason, they're giving you 33%. So it's not quite a third. But yes, that's exactly right. Where can I find that for you quickly so you know it? Um. Let me see if I can find it for you quickly. I can read it out. I'm going to learn to speak like a Brit so you can't hear anything I say. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I hurt three people's ears that complained. That means I hurt other people's ears. That means I hurt other people's ears. I have a lot to learn, you know. I have a lot to learn. Um, all right, let me just go. And let me go. <laughs> Let me check here first, BJ. There's so many documents. Let me see if I can find it quickly. All right, well, um, I'll, I'll show this to you. It's from the SEC website. This is the, the frequently asked questions. And let me just read one to you, and that way you'll know. Um, uh, what will happen in the business combination? DLQ goes into the Aubrey spec. What is the consideration being paid to DLQ parent security holders, us. In other words, logic, shareholders. Here, anyway, that's what it is. 
DLQ parent will receive 11,400,000 shares of common stock, of which 3,762,000 or 33% will be distributed to DLQ, uh, DLQ security parent securities holders, us, logic, logic as of the record date set in that time. 1.6 million or 14% will be given to the hedge funds and the remaining, the remaining, oh, uh, here, hang, hang, hang on, hang on. Hello, hello? I don't know. I'm I'm still live if you want to talk to people, but all right, hang on. All right, for those of you who waited, here's the voice. All right, so I drove two hours to go meet Dan Gino. I'm here. Say that again because I switched and they didn't hear the name. I'm here to meet Dan Bongino. Uh, I spoke with one of our Two of our shareholders that are excellent got people hooked me up with the top Secret Service guy, and they're ta I'm going into New York City. I have to give them all the information. Uh, I'm going to go to the top guys in New York. If this is above their head, we're going to go to D.C. for the the, uh, the forensic accountants where they will trace the money back to the banks. They have access to chasing, uh, following the money to all the banks in the world that they have access to. So the Secret Service thing has been a boom. We're exploding on the scene here. All right. So it's all good. And uh, I'm freezing my ass off. I drove two hours and uh, <clears throat> I'm waiting to sit down with Dan. And uh, then, uh, well, on my way home, on my way home, excuse me. <clears throat> but that's it. So it went great. I've been driving, flying all day. It's all great. So. That's all I got to say. What more can I say? I got to go home, do some work. I got to put the paperwork together for them. I'm going to list out the paper trail. I told them they're stealing $9 billion a day. Wow. We have, wow. we have proof of that from the DTC. And if you don't let it, if they keep letting it go, the whole country is going to collapse. Did Do you think Bongiorno, how do you say his last name? Dan Bongiorno? Did, Bongino. Bongino. Do you think he understood it? They all understand it. They they all thought it was a penny stock scam. And I said, no, you guys got it wrong. They're doing it to Apple, everything. I said, every company. Awesome. They can't, I told them it's counterfeiting. Awesome. We're buying, we're buying nothing. They get our money, we get nothing. That's just what it is. Awesome. And I said that I the reason I went to the Secret Service is because you guys are in charge of counterfeiting. Well, instead of counterfeiting currency or you know, Louis Vuitton bags. They're counterfeiting stocks, and the money's going offshore to terrorists. Prove me wrong, and it's not terrorists that are getting the money. Follow the money trail. It tells who it is. No one says anything. And the Treasury Department was there with you? Well, I didn't say the Treasury. I said the Secret Service. That's they the same. Nothing. That's the same. Oh, That's the same. I told about the IRS, how they don't pay taxes. He thought that was very interesting. But again, let them figure it out. I'm going with it, the information. I'm going to the top guy in New York and then to D.C. The top guy in New York works closely with the Southern District. So that's where it is. And you got as much as I did. I worked an hour and we have two great shareholders that hooked me up with them. And Ace was part of it. I'd like to thank Ace for the introduction. Ace is but great. Again, Ace is great. So again, And avid, avid, busy, everything. No, I, mean, I don't want to sit here giving everybody credits. This is, uh, we're here to, we work as a team. And if anyone has any other connections, feel free. We'll go knock them down. When you, when we get a connection, you know, I have a husband and wife, FBI, one secret service. I'm going to see them. I have a secret service guy in New York meeting on Monday. Could be different from the people. So you, you, those two gay guys that your wife brought back, you married one of them? <laughs> you have a husband and a wife? There are a lot of fun at parties, these guys. So, <laughs> anyway, I just I just wanted to, I didn't know what was going on. I just wanted to tell William what was going on with the Secret Service. It's awesome. 
It's let me tell you something, people. It's awesome. And be if you get a guy like Dan Bongino, and the I'm and gonna have him, I'm going to buy his book and have him sign it, and tell him to, to him, and it's going to say F O R K shorts. And I'm going to take a picture of it, put it on Twitter and, when I get home. And then you get the Treasury, the Secret Service after these guys. Oh my gosh, that oh, that's a whole listen. different kettle of fish. Then the well, limp, listen, the limp. They made fun. They made fun of the SEC. It's civil, undermanned. They said the same thing Elon Musk said. So you know that's you know they, these guys are brain dead. But anyway, listen. Let me run. Um, thank right. you. Have a great weekend. If I hear anything else, I'll give you a shout. Thank you very much. Time. Thanks for your hard work. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right. No bye. Thank bye. You. All right. Well, All right, guys. Um, Sixteen to one, Bill Nelson. Okay. So silver gold should be 16 to one. But anyway, you get the idea. I actually think, and I didn't say that, but I follow uh, Dave Morgan as well. I think he's the one that says it'll go to one to one. One to one with gold. Remember things in things in the market moves go to extremes they go out of equilibrium and then then they come back to equilibrium so this is um this is really big i you got to you guys got to give you got to give uh ham credit for you know he's not paid for this he's not you know it's just amazing just amazing all right it's 641 Unless I see a, a compelling question, I want to apologize to BBJ. I didn't mean to make that mistake. And uh, uh, I, I thank everyone for coming on. Um, uh, I think one thing I might do before I sign off is just play this again if it'll work, if it'll work, it may not. But but not once did the SEC go after any of the hedge funds uh, who were nonstop shorting and distorting Tesla, not once. They would lie flat, the hedge funds would lie flat out on TV for their own gain at the expense of retail investors. Not once, literally a thousand times. Not once did the SEC pursue them. How do you explain this failure? And the incentive SEC? structure is is messed up, because the, the the lawyers at the SEC are not paid well. They they it's a fairly low paying job, but they're, what they're looking for is a trophy from from the SEC. They, they're looking for something they put on basically their LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, from that, they can get a job at a high paying law firm. That's exactly what the. Uh, Blur here did, um, and 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 the, and the reason they don't attack the, the hedge funds is because those hedge funds employ those law firms, and they know if they attack the hedge funds, they're affecting their pure, their future career prospects. So they sell small investors down the river for their own career. That's what actually happens. Regulatory capture. Regulatory capture. Yeah. Not good. Uh, you just heard it. I did. I just heard it. I he didn't give me much of an update, other than it went really well. So anyway, um, uh, as usual, peace, love, and happiness. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mark Ryder. Um, I am feeling better. Um, thank you all for your allowances for my ups and downs and uh, all that. And um, anyway, by the way, BBJ, it says that though that 3,762,000 shares is 33%. Then the hedge funds gets 14%. And then 
we will receive the remaining 53%, which isn't quite that you're going to get now that I'm reading it. It's not that that 14% going to the hedge fund kind of screws it up a little bit. But you're going to get one for 12. You're going to get one for 12. Um, sorry, wait. Uh, all right. Um, anyway, I'll do better. I'll do better as soon as I am able. Rocky Raccoon stepped in the room only to find Gidgen's Bible. Gidgen checked out. He left it in no doubt. Only to do something with Sweet Molly's Revival. There you go. I think that is a fact to go out on. So thank you, Sky Dog. So I'm going to uh, say good night to everybody. I, I'm, I'm sure we might talk over the weekend. Uh, that'll be more driven by ham than anything else. I'll see if I can get Brent's son to come on over the weekend. Don't count on that because there may be limitations. And um, uh, 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 um, I forgot I was bit I, I cut one guy out. So anyway, we'll catch you on the flip side. And thank you. Don't forget to say prayers for Jenny L. Jenny L and her family and and for healing and for uh, uh, God's strength and presence in her life. All right. Cheers, mates.